Here's where it gets weird. Hey, about time you got here. You almost missed one of Lone Pine High's most ancient rituals. A cruel and grisly tradition that is not for the faint of heart or weak of bow. Just remember, never let him smell your fear. Welcome, Welcome dear students, to our 123rd annual pep rally. Ah! It is time once again to celebrate our fine Sporting tradition. <laughs> Fine tradition of losing, that is. No school team has won a single game for as far back as anyone can remember. We really need a new team name. What's wrong with the noble slug? They convert rotting vegetable matter to rich, loamy soil. And slug slime has some truly phenomenal properties. Slugs don't win football games, Mo. They get stepped on. Oh, Mimi's right. No wonder we always lose. We should change the name to the Howling Maniacs or the Lone Pine Slashers. Speaking of maniacs and slashers, looks like Gizzard Gizerski is on the prowl. Wonder who's in their crosshairs today. Him is who. Huh, that explains a new look. What you do, Hitch? Hide his chew toy again? Hitch? Who's Hitch? The name is Aretha May, honey, and I am dressed to impress. Hey, Gizzard's brain is the size of a walnut, right? <laughs> He'll never know it's me. I go, girl. What's up? He is so doomed. Tell your brother he is roadkill if I ever find him. Uh, brother, I, I, I don't have a... Oh, I mean, I am down with the roadkill, Mr. Lodge and in charge. I'll give him the 411 just as soon as I see him. You. This losing streak is depressing. It's like the school's been cursed. Cursed. There's always hope. Let's check it out. You are severely weird and twisted, Mo. I like that. Okay, so far we've gone all the way back to the 1920s. What's the tally? We're 04 6520. Not even one lousy stinking tie? Shh. Nope. And that includes practices. Man, how can you lose a practice? You'd have to be total slugs. Check this out! Shh! Lone Pine Slugs. Division champs? No, no way. way! Anyone up for an all-nighter? <laughs> Unbelievable. Once upon a time, Lone Pine High was a sports powerhouse. For three years running, the slugs were champions in football, volleyball, basketball, even cow milking. 
and log hewing. Cow milking and log hewing. Come on, since when are those sports? Not since the Dark Ages. According to my research, it was all thanks to just one guy. Jimbo Crazy Legs Walker. You're kidding, he looks like a total wimp. My granny could take him. He was captain of every single team. He scored every single basket and every single touchdown. Milked every single cow? I even downloaded an old game film from sportsoutofthewazoo.com. Look at him go! They didn't call him crazy legs for nothing. Wow, he's almost supernatural. Exactly. According to an article in this old newspaper, there was a secret to Jimbo's amazing athletic powers. Steroids, black magic, radiation leak. Alien abductions! It's even better than an alien abduction. They say Jimbo Walker had a lucky jock. A jock strap with supernatural powers? I'm so sure. Talk about support. <laughs> Talk about a goofy superstition. Superstition or super mojo. I mean, Jimbo looks like a human pepperoni stick. No way he could have been a top athlete in so many sports without some sort of otherworldly help. I know what you're gonna say. We've gotta get our hands on Jimbo Walker's jock. Gagorama, speak for yourself. Hello, that jock strap is over 100 years old. It's long gone by now. Are you kidding? Something like that would be a family heirloom. It's probably hanging on a mantle somewhere. We'll track down Jimbo's relatives. No Gomo. Says here he died all alone. No family, no friends. No product endorsements? Nada. They say Jimbo took everything with him to the grave. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah, but it's dark out. Bonus. Well, this is real sweet. Yep. There's one thing I like better than relaxing at home, all warm and safe and sound. It's poking through a boneyard in the middle of the night. Yeah. I love a good field trip, don't you? Come on, Jimbo should be somewhere in the low 1800s. Uh, not again. Feel the force, Mimi. Well, we've checked every tombstone around. Still no sign of Jimbo Walker. Looks like we've hit a dead end. Get it? <laughs> dead end. Jackpot. Mo? Where'd he go? Yo, up, up here. here. Here lies Jimbo Crazy Legs Walker. I'm number one. Like I said, jackpot! I bet nobody's been up here in over a century. Yeah, nobody here but old Jimbo. Why isn't he down there with everybody else? Maybe he didn't like crowds. Hmm. Whoa, he really did take everything with him. Try not to get your hopes up, Mo. Even if we do find this lucky jock, its powers are probably just some crazy superstition. Sometimes superstitions are based on reality, Mimi. Look at all this stuff. It's it's like discovering King Tut's tomb. Uh, didn't Tut's tomb come with a death curse? Oh, that was just some crazy superstition. Ready? Not really, but that's never stopped you before. Don't worry. I've got you covered, Luke. Uh-oh. Earthquake? Jimbo deked his own locker? Why the heck would he do that? 
only one reason. He was protecting something very precious. Awesome! like somebody died in here. Oops, no offense, Jimbo. Well, as the saying goes, seek and ye shall find. I don't think they were talking about a hundred-year-old jockstrap. What the? Where'd it go? It was right... <laughs> Look at me, guys! I'm crazy legs! Whoa! Yeah. Careful, Hitch. That's a precious artifact you're goofing with. Now don't be such a buzzkill. I was just having a little... Fun? What's happening? I don't know, but so far, I'm giving it two thumbs up. Yeah! Oh! Ah! Still say it's just a superstition? Is this gonna take long? I still have homework to do, you know. Oh! A little painful, maybe, but awesome! Are you okay? My, 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 my legs? Is something broken? No, no, it's just they feel kind of crazy. Look at me go! Oh! Bullet pass! Huh? Shoestring catch. Touchdown. Yeah! The crowd goes wild. Hey, you're wasting all the mojo. He's up, Hitch. Hitch? Who's Hitch? Just call me Crazy Leg. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the greatest sports legend this town has ever known. I'm number one, baby! <laughs> Looks like there's still some get up and go left in Jimbo's old jock strap after all. <laughs> uh, it's weird. It always is when you're involved, Mo. But I have to admit, discovering a hundred year old jock strap with superpowers is really pushing the envelope. Even for you. I'm talking about Crazy Legs Walker. I mean, he was the greatest sports hero the school's ever known, right? The one and only ever known. So, why haven't we heard about this guy? You think there'd be a statue of him? Or at least a plaque or something? You're right, Mo. At any other school, he'd be treated like a god. Instead, Crazy Legs dies all alone and forgotten, without a friend in the world. Mm, poor old Jimbo. I know. We can build a tribute to Crazy Legs in the school trophy case. His lucky jockstrap could be the centerpiece. Great idea, Mimi. It might even inspire the slugs to win for a change. Let's hope Hitch didn't lose it. Look at me go! <laughs> hey, a gizzard. How's life in the slow lane, Giz? Oh, kill! <laughs> oh, missed me. Oh, still ya. Yes. Missed me again. Yo, little. First he's out of brains, now he's out of breath. I'm a... When I get a hold of you, you... Oh! Catch me later, gizzard. We should be careful, Hitch. We don't know what that thing is capable of. Did you see me dismantle gizzard? This thing is a rush. Yeah, that was great. Uh, now hand it over. What do you mean? We need it for our tribute to Crazy Legs. Well, I guess she can have it. Ha-ha! <laughs> If you can catch me! Ha 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 ha! Ha ha ha! 
football before, son? Nope, but I'm sure I'm great at it. I'll be the biggest sports hero the school has ever known. I guess this solves the mystery of why there's never been a statue, or even the slightest mention of Lone Pine High's greatest sports hero of all time. Crazy Lake's Walker was a total ball hog. Everybody hated his guts. We have to get Hitch out of that cursed jock shot before he goes from super jock to super jerk. I have a feeling we might be just a little late. Everybody who wants an autograph, line up here. Only two bucks a pop. <laughs> Eat my dust. <laughs> I smoked him. Ha! Blew their doors off. You see that? Hitch, they're only three years old. They're just crying because they lost. Get used to it, losers! Hitch, snap out of it. This winning thing is twisting you. Ha! You're just jealous. Because I'm a winner, and you two are nothing but a pair of losers. Yeah. Oh, let's get that thing off him so I can stuff it down his throat. He doesn't mean it, Mimi. That's just the jocks job talking. Later, losers. Why don't you come out tonight and watch me lead the football team to its first victory in a hundred years? <laughs> All right, team, here's the plan. Team? I don't need no stinking team. Why should I share the glory? You guys stay here and keep the bench warm. It's time for Crazy Legs Hitchcock to do his thing. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, are those girly guys all you got? Where's your real team? <laughs> You're toast. You're done like dinner. You're history. <laughs> Man, that jock is turning him into the biggest dork the school has ever known. Since Crazy Legs Walker, anyway. Hitch is completely possessed by the winning spirit. We've got to repossess him. Wait, those are the warthogs from Our Lady of Perpetual Pain Reform School. Those giants will grind his hey, bones to make their bread. Why don't you put your dresses on and go home before you get hurt? You're right, Mimi. If we take away Hitch's mojo, he'll get creamed. Hey, losers, keep your eyes on me. Watch a real winner. I'm going to bring a little joy to all your pathetic loser lives. Woo! Actually, a little creaming might do him some good. I think I know how to reach him. Hey, Hitch! What? Oh, get it off. It's on me. Oh, get it away. Oh! One back to normal Hitch coming up. Cream style. You're awesome, Mo. I can't believe you got hitched to listen to Reason. Forget Reason. I had to hit him where he lives. I told him Crazy Legs' lucky jock was cursed. With the worst case of jock itch known to mankind. Oh, gross. I need a shower. Huh? On second thought, I need a medic. <laughs> Sorry, Hitch, but it was for your own good. How could a herd of warthogs and cleats tap dancing on my tongue be good for me? Now, let's put this thing back where no one will ever find it again. It's kind of a shame, though. Nah, yeah, Hitch will heal. Eventually. No, I mean, turning our backs on all this mojo. 
Maybe someone else should try it on. Somebody more strong-willed, like, uh, me. Hmm, I was afraid of this. Get thee back to the depths of the locker room, oh foul winning spirit. The game's over in this town, buddy. Big on somebody else's jockstrap, huh? Decent. So, since we're here, let's check out Alcatraz Al's grave. You're crazy, Mo! Sports equipment has really come a long way since the old days. Did you know that the Greek Olympians competed buck naked? Yeah, the guy who invented the jockstrap must have been a spectator. Early hockey players had nothing but a few thin straps of leather and an attitude for protection. But nowadays, they're bulletproof. In the future, contestants will be nothing but equipment. Robots, remote controlled by completely out of shape couch potatoes. Scary thought, huh? I know what you're thinking. Just your average, normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill high school, right? Wrong. Luckily, things are never as normal as they seem, especially in Ouija Falls. You want proof? Just check out those socks. Something like that can really get a kid cold from the herd. You've probably seen it on TV. A herd of wildebeest gathered around the watering hole. Not a care in the world. Then, splash! One less wildebeest, one full croc. Well, time to get this nature show we call high school on the road. Ah, there they go, Mrs. Cornbuckle. Eager young minds, wandering lost in the desert of ignorance, thirsting for knowledge. <laughs> and we, we shall be their guides to the oasis of higher learning. Oh, yes. Hey, guys. Yo, Mo. Key pasta, Mo Kronk. Zabo Gazerski. A prime example of Mother Nature in all her horrid glory. Just remember, always buy the stretchiest underwear you can find. Huh? Oh, my brain is still sleeping in. I hope we don't have math first period. Worse. Jim. Oh. Worse than worse. I hear Coach Conkout is going to make us run cross country today. Ooh, cross country, huh? Oh, that's brutal. Too bad I'm gonna miss it. Gee, Milo, let me guess. You have to be excused from gym today? Check. Milo Krasinski doesn't do gym. I'm allergic. He's even more allergic to the truth. Check it out. I sprained my arm rescuing a little kid in a stroller from getting squished flat by a runaway bulldozer. That is so lame. Actually, it was triplets on a burning bridge. Why not make it quintuplets? You know, get more bang for your bowl. Quintuplets? Nobody'd ever believe that. What an amateur. Oh, that guy really rots my socks. Hey, Milo, how's your cousin doing? You know, the alligator wrestler. Ah, he's fine since I sewed his arms back on. You go, Milo! You're like a surgeon or something! Milo is so full of it, it's a wonder he doesn't explode. The weird thing is, people actually buy into it. An endless sea of empty vessels yearning to have their holds filled with a cargo of knowledge. <laughs> Mr. Prickle, sir, I'll need an exemption slip for gym class today. You see, there were these quintuplets in a stroller and a runaway bulldozer. <gasps> oh, my. Mayhem must surely ensue. There's still hope, you guys. Maybe it'll be field hockey or soccer or something. It's cross-country, all right. Somehow they always know. I hear the mud flats are particularly deep this time of year. The mud isn't all that's deep. Get your shorts on, Milo. Concat will never buy that load of bulk. Krasinski! <laughs> Hello. 
Nice work saving those kids, son. It's the talk of the teacher's lounge. If the rest of you were in half as good shape as Krasinski here, maybe more quadruplets on burning fridges would get safe from runaway bulldozers in this town. Now let's haul some booty! You guys ever notice that by the time we get to the finish line, we always seem to be missing a kid or two? <sighs> yeah. Ever hear about the kid who got lost in the backstretch through Cesspool Swamp? He was so scared. He just kept running and running. He lived off the land, eating grubs and drinking swamp water filled with bug backwash. He became the Cesspool Swamp Devil. Terrorizing all who cross his path. But then, one day, he... No, it's too horrific. You guys don't want to know. Sure we do. Yeah, and don't skimp out on the gory details. You asked for it. The locals captured him. They tried to civilize him. You know, they taught him how to use a knife and fork. And not to burp at the table. And other things. Sorry, swamp gas. They thought taming him would end his reign of terror. Wrong. He'd heard the call of the wild. There was still a part of him that was pure animal. Which explains why he grew up to be a gym teacher. Nice try, Mo. Yeah, we're not buying that one. True story. Move it, ladies. This ain't no nature walk. Ooh, anyone else smell swamp gas? Sorry. Nah. Milo, do you have the math homework I assigned? Gee, Mrs. Cornbuckle, I was working on it. But then suddenly, I had to rush an emergency shipment of medicine to a remote Alaskan village by dog sled. There I was, studying the Pythagorean theorem when the phone... As thanks for saving the entire village from the herd of rampaging walruses, they gave me the name Muckaluck, which means hero who comes in the nick of time. Well, that was quite an adventure, Milo. Now then, tomorrow we're going to begin a new subject called Modern Cultural Studies. I want you all to bring in an interesting artifact and present it to the class. Unbelievable. She bought it. The man is talented. There he is. Super liar. Faster than a speeding rumor. Able to leap tall truths with a single lie. As long as I never have to see him in spandex tights. <laughs> <laughs> Am I missing the punchline here? We were just um discussing cultural studies and saying uh, how exciting it it'll be to to study culture um uh, and and stuff. The three jesters stay after class. The rest of you are yeah! dismissed. Oh. Amateurs. I don't know about you, but somehow people can always tell when I'm lying. And Milo used to make it look so easy. Hey, did you know I'm the third in line to the Bavarian throne? Not buying it, huh? See? Anyway, what happened to old Milo was right at the top of the weirdo meter. Milo! Where is that kid? Milo! Here, Dad, let me. It's my job. Right, and you were supposed to do it hours ago. I know, Dad, I know. And I was about to. But suddenly, the neighbor's cat got chased up a tree by a rabid wallaby. You know how poor old Muffin hates heights, so of course I had A to. rabid wallaby? 
Guess it must have escaped from a zoo or something, huh? You are so full of... Oh, right, my new chair is here. Oh, this baby has all the options. Cooler, phone, massager, CD. And there's even an onboard soda fountain. Killer. Carl, quit fooling with that silly chair. You don't want to miss black light bowling night, do ya? Oh, gee, uh, what would I rather do? Uh, bowl in the dark? Or rest my weary buttocks within the soft, leathery embrace of my brand new Relaxo Magic Ultra Recliner while watching my beloved 49ers crush the Cowboys. <laughs> or spend the rest of the week sleeping on the couch. <laughs> we won't be long. Dinner's in the microwave. Drink your milk, eat your green beans. <laughs> and stay out of my chair. Nobody makes a butt divot in my new leather. Get it? Yes, sir. Ew! Captain, potato chips approaching at warp speed. We need cherry cola or we'll never wash them down. Make it so, number one. Soda fountain deployed, Captain. Stand by to fire. Three, two, one. Oh. A nice move, you stupid chair. <gasps> oh, man. Dad's gonna freak. Okay, Milo. No need to panic. Let's see. Burglars? No. I'll use that one for the broken picture window. No. Marauding Vikings? No, they dented the car and wrecked Dad's nine iron. Ow! Hey, how'd that... Soda must be shorting out the circuits. Now what? I got it. Gee, Dad, the power blackout made your chair go all haywire and. Ow! Huh? Ow! <laughs> Back off! Or I'll vaporize you with my laser sword. It's a real one, you know. I got it from some friends of mine in the Centaurian galaxy who stole my homework. Stupid batteries. No! It's not! No! No! Yeah. Dad? Mom? That was quick. We're speed bowlers. What in blue blistering blazes are you doing? And why are all the lights off? The chair. It's... Huh? Have you been playing around with my chair? I thought I told you... I didn't go near it. Honest! You see, Dad, there were these Vikings posing as vacuum cleaner salesmen and... I want the truth for once, Milo! I didn't touch it, I swear! The stain was just... there. Ugh. That's plausible. And he does look innocent, Carl. Hmm. Well, I suppose it is possible they sent me a lemon. That's it, Dad. They sold you a Relaxo Magic Lemon. Boy, how do you like that? What a bunch of weasels. That's what you get for buying it at some cheap discount place, hon. You know what you should do? Send it back, that's what. Ouch! Don't push it, Milo. It's late and I'm bushed. We'll deal with this tomorrow, young man. Yeah, that chair had all the options all right, including a very strong sense of right and wrong. It's weird. Until now, Milo was the type of kid who spent his days lying like a rug, and his nights sleeping like a baby. But that recliner really got into his head. Uh, no, no. Get away! Get away! Uh, 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 Deal with this tomorrow. Tomorrow. No! Ah! Uh, oh man. If Dad figures it out, I'm history.
mom and dad. Had to get to school early today for choir practice. Love, Milo. P.S. The guys from the chair place came and took it back this morning. They said it was recalled because of factory defects. Since I was up early, I figured I'd take care of it and let you guys sleep in. Oh, isn't that sweet? And you wanted to trade him in for another son? Sweet. And a little hard to believe. We'll get to the bottom of this when he gets home from school. Morning, Milo. Hey, is that snake bite all better? Sure is. No black mamba is a match for me. Hey, hey. Uh, how'd the big games go, Milo? Great. I scored three touchdowns and set a new record in the pole vault. Yeah, boy. Ever get that weird feeling somebody's watching you? Well, for Milo, it wasn't somebody. It was some chairs. <laughs> if Milo knew what was waiting for him at school, He'd have been running the other way. I'm so pleased you brought something in for your cultural studies presentation, Milo. I did? <gasps> All right, class, let's take our seats. Um, I I've got a stomachache, and I I'm running a fever and passing a kidney stone, too. So I have to go home, please. <gasps> Good lighting. Swanky. We'll let Milo present his household artifact first. What would you like to tell us? I want to say that... that I... lied. I didn't really deliver medicine to Alaska. Huh? And I'm not really a pro hockey player. I never hunted great white sharks. This is where things really took a turn for the weird. Milo was fessing up to every lie he ever told. And I don't drive a race car. I'm not related to NSYNC. I never made out with Mimi Valentine. She doesn't keep a picture of me under her pillow. Milo Krasinski spilling his guts? Can the end of the world be far behind? Well, that was a very <laughs> uh, interesting presentation, Milo. Um, wh what happened? You don't know? All I know is I have to go! Milo finished his business, but the chair was just getting started. Ah! Maybe it was upset about having a stain on its reputation. Ah! Oh, Mr. Sister, help! Keep it away from me! Here now, what are you so all fired scared of? It's just a chair. Yeah, might a fancy one, though. Too bad about the stain. The stain! Yeah, that's it! It's, uh, it's got the Ebola virus. We've got to get rid of it before the whole school is contaminated. kids and their loud rock and roll music and crazy biology experiments. The guys at NASA asked me to be the first kid to set foot on Mars, so naturally, I told them... <gasps> No idea where he was going. But I think the chair did. Cherry Cola. 
And it was me who wrecked your nine iron. It wasn't Vikings. And Grandma didn't really say I could use your bank account. And Mom's tuna casserole is gross. I always flush it when you're not looking. Well, you well gotta they do say the truth can sometimes hurt. But even so, Milo finally came clean. Just like the cherry cola stain. And I'm not the mayor. Flossing hasn't been declared hazardous to your health. And there's no such thing as a get out of school free card. Pretty weird, huh? Anyway, I guess you could say it was a happy ending. Unless, of course, you're a no good lying weasel like Milo was. Hey, check it out. Looks like your dad's in there buying one too. Huh? Yeah, I guess you can stay over at my place tonight. Have you heard the one about the throne of no return? These guys are playing poker one night. When one gets up and says, gotta hit the can, be right back. No, it's not the king and queen kind of throne. An hour later, another guy says, gotta hit the can, be right back. About a half hour goes by. The one guy says, hey, I thought they said they'd be right back. <laughs> of course, no one believed the wild stories about a demon toilet except for the guy in apartment 13B. Right after taking down the notice he put up last week, he left town that very night. Gotta hit the can. How'd you like those to be your last words? Monday morning, Lone Pine High. <coughs> Test results? Prepare for carnage. Alice Braniac, her straight A's will get her into law school. But Duffy Dinsmore, the only center of higher learning he'll qualify for is the College of Burger Knowledge. He'll be flipping burgers at a drive-through near you. Ah! Yeah, this little piece of paper will make you or break you. No wonder everyone's stressed to the max right about now. Everyone except Rico Kellyan. He doesn't have a care in the world, because he knows his report card will always be straight X's. E wasn't low enough. Wait till his parents get a load of this. Congratulations, son. We are so proud of you. And why wouldn't they be? Rico's going to be a kajillionaire one day. His parents are banking on it. And so is his agent. See, Rico isn't just the dumbest kid the whole Tri-County area has ever seen. He's also the most naturally talented athlete. I know what you're thinking. So how come our school teams are still so totally lame? That's because Rico is so good, he's not allowed on any school teams. He's been playing with adult teams since he was 12. And everywhere he plays, there's a pro scout shoving a million dollar contract in his face. not just out of the park, it's out of the galaxy. That's his fourth homer of the day, 87th of the season. Babe Ruth is rolling in his grave. And the pro scouts are fighting in the infield. Go! Go! Attaboy, Rico! Way to lace it! Aw, thanks, guys. Just a lucky swing. Mr. Caliente, can you sign my hat? Sure. You're Kenny, right? Wow, he knows my name. Thank you, Mr. Caliente. Aw, uh, just call me Rico, okay? Yep, Rico can sure hammer a ball. But the best thing about him is, he's a real great guy. Most hotshot athletes have swelled heads, but not Rico. Maybe that's because in Rico's case, there's nothing in there to swell? I don't know, Mimi. Catching a fly ball isn't as simple as it looks. In a split second, Rico has to calculate his speed relative to the speed of the ball while making adjustments based on the ball's trajectory and compensating for wind forces. Rico! Get out of there! He's shown the three times table and he's totally stumped. Well, so what? He's gonna be a pro athlete, not a rocket scientist. Fifty points!
points. And it's still the first quarter. Go, Rico! your contract, boy. <laughs> what? And waste all that skating talent? Take off, huh? Hey, you take off. Hey, he's mine. about a career-threatening injury. Yeah, Rico had it made all right until that scoreboard made him into jam. <laughs> <laughs> Why me? <laughs> Why does it always happen to me? <laughs> You know, it's funny what having a half-ton metal scoreboard crash land on a guy's head can do to him. Rico! My Rico, you're okay! Indeed, Mosley, old friend. Quite a startling incident, wouldn't you say? In fact, the probability of such a sequence of unlikely events taking place again would be 60,480,903 to 1, given a 2% margin of error 9 times out of 10, of course. Um, are you sure you're okay? Indubitably. Why do you ask? You sound kind of like a brainiac. And you said indubitably. Ah, yes. It would seem the sharp blow to my cranium has had the unlikely consequence of raising my intelligence by a considerable degree. That conk on the noggin has made Rico smart. Maybe it's amnesia. He's forgotten he's stupid. An interesting theory, Mimi. But to prove it, we will have to do several controlled studies following the standard double-blind procedures, of course, and then yeah, we'll... Yeah, that, that's great, son. And I'll quit showing off and answer the question. Are you okay? Given that the perpendicular components of motion are independent of one another, and that the ball will travel with a parabolic trajectory due to a downward gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, a launch angle of 31 degrees would seem to be in order. That's my boy. <laughs> He's playing all oh, teams. He's sad in the face. <laughs> A classic display of aggression by competing homo sapiens attempting to establish dominance within the group dynamic. Fascinating. Just think, last week, Rico needed a special tutor to help him with the three times table. And now, he's acing every test. <laughs> Therefore, according to my calculations, the universe will begin to contract approximately 12 and one-half billion years from now. The so-called big crunch, if you will. Rico isn't just smart. He's scary smart. Are you saying Albert Einstein was wrong? <gasps> now, now, let's not judge the man too harshly. Were it not for his distinguished work, I might not be standing before you today. <laughs> Parents were worried sick. What's he doing in there? <gasps> He's studying again. We've got to do something. He's ruining our, I mean, his life. Good evening, dearest parents. I say, is something troubling you? We're sorry, Rico. This is for your own good. Your mother and I have decided it's time for you to, uh, leave. You mean you're sending me to university? Don't be stupid. It was sending you to baseball practice. But I wanted to... No, hustle! Yeah! From that day on, Rico's parents made sure that Rico never missed a single game or practice. They did their best to keep him away from any test books or computers. You know, for his own good.
Poor guy. Poor? Are you kidding? He's gonna be a kajillionaire! Yeah, he's got a maid, Mo. So do his folks. And his agent. And whichever scout is the last one standing. Yeah, poor guy. Hmm. Hey, Rico. Great game yesterday. I am gratified to learn my performance gave you some measure of vicarious enjoyment, Mosley. It didn't seem like you were having much fun, though. I must confess I have been preoccupied of late, what with attending so many sporting events, as well as finishing my thesis on a feasible method of cold fusion. Cold fusion? That's only the holy grail of science. A non-polluting, endless source of energy. The solution to all the world's problems. That is correct, Mosley. Utopia is finally within our grasp. <sighs> How are you going to break the news to your folks? You wanna... What?! I want to use my superior intellect to do work that will benefit all of humanity. Humanity? Where does he get this stuff? Deep down, he's still a good boy. I know it. Fusion smoozing. Listen, kid, you've been offered 25 million bucks over four seasons. 25 million dollars? Such an unconscionable sum. To think that someone indulging in a recreational pastime would be paid more than a scientist or a doctor or a teacher. I simply will not accept this obscene offer. Yeah, don't sweat it, kid. It's only a first offer. You can hold out for plenty more. I'm sorry, but I cannot in good conscience pursue a career as a highly overpaid professional athlete. And now, if you will excuse me, I must submit my cold fusion thesis for peer review. <laughs> Where did we go wrong? <laughs> Why me? Say, if a blow to the noggin made him smart... Another conk on the head ought to make him normal, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> either that or it'll kill the kid. Right. <laughs> what do we got to lose? Hey, it's worth a shot. To the head, that is. Well, I guess these guys have learned something from Rico after all. All for one. And one for all. Teamwork. Well, that bunk on the beam made Rico smart all right. But luckily, it didn't affect his reflexes. Is someone there? <laughs> oh, jeez. You guys couldn't eat the broadside of a smart kid's head, huh? That's the sweetest swing I've ever seen. Oh, missed! Whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> home safe home. I wouldn't count on it. What do you think you're doing? It's for his own good. I'm thinking the future. And the boy's future. I know, dear. But that vase was a wedding present from Aunt Marge. Here, use this. My lucky ball. <laughs> Good thinking. Higher! Strike! Great. Now we gotta buy him a new helmet. Rico, where are you, dear? Mommy wants to kiss you goodnight. A night on the run certainly renders one somewhat peckish. Hmm. It's best to be prepared for any eventuality. Good morning. Um, is this the domicile of Van Rico Caliente Esquire, the young genius who has authored this groundbreaking thesis on cold fusion? I don't wish to be immodest, but in fact, I am the young genius of whom you speak. The, are you 
quite sure. I was expecting someone skinnier with thick glasses and a shirt pocket full of leaky pens. Forgive me, but I must be absolutely certain. Now, uh, what do you see? Nothing but blobs of ink. Ah, you are indeed a true genius. You wouldn't believe some of the silly answers I get. I'm a Professor Kindly, head of the theoretical physics lab at the university. I've come to offer you a full scholarship. I'll handle this, son. Father, please. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. A chance to use my intellect for the betterment of humankind. Yeah, yeah, indeed. In fact, do you see that automobile? It's a prototype I've been developing that runs on tap water. And there are several more such world-saving projects that you could be a part of. Well then, whatever are we waiting for? No use. Our Rico is just too smart. <laughs> For a car that runs on common tap water, that thing sure belts out a lot of fumes. And now that I think of it, has the university been abandoned for the last 50 years? I had expected to see classrooms teeming with eager young students. Yeah, well, it's, um... Summer break. Come along, my boy. You shall now join the finest minds in science. They have a secret, too. But where are these finest minds in science of whom you have so glowingly spoken? Where else? They're over there on the mantel. I... I think I'll take my leave. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, let's not forget our manners. I haven't even made the introductions. Dr. Zitmeyer, Rico. Rico, Dr. Zitmeyer. The good doctor here was mere weeks away from discovering a cure for acne when his research came to a sudden halt. Such a brilliant mind. It was a pleasure to pick his brain. Pick his b brain? Surely you're talking metaphorically. Not at all, my boy, not at all. I am talking, Professor Kindness, a one brain harvester. Patent pending? You see, these gentlemen were once rivals of mine until I picked their brains and stole their brilliant ideas. This cold fusion idea of yours is going to make me a cajillionaire. <laughs> I wanted to share my discovery with the world. I had no intention of personal profit. Then you're not so smart after all. I thought the world of academia would be kinder and gentler than the arena of professional sports. But alas, it's no different than my former life. Only back then I had friends and a brain, such as it was. Now then, this won't hurt a bit. It'll hurt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, I've got Alfred Nobel, and I'm not afraid to use him. My professor of the month's award. You, you wouldn't hit an old man with it, would you? Well, no. <laughs> Kids today, no gumption. Professor, wait. Aren't you forgetting something? Uh, a conscience? No, safety goggles. You don't want to take any chances when those skull fragments start flying. Yeah, you're right. I could put my eye out for this thing. Now, where did I leave those goggles? Mosley, I admire your adherence to a high moral code when it comes to the use of violence against the elderly. But I do hope you harbor no similar sentiments when it comes to giving someone closer to your own age a strong blow to the cranial region. Huh? Give me a bonk on the head. Oh, come on, Rico. You don't really believe it'll make you dumb again. Perhaps not, but I do believe you and I can make it work if we employ a modicum of teamwork. I hate to do this, Professor, but you leave me no choice. Gee, thanks, Mo. Rico, what's three times two? A uh, five? No, wait, four. A uh, three hundred and six? Twenty-three! He's an imbecile. It's all over, Professor. Rico's brain's not worth picking. Well, at least I still have my cold fusion process. Hey, that's Rico's. Was Rico's, you mean? 
Who would ever believe that such a brilliant paper was written by your dim-witted friend? Gee, he's right, Mo. You're too smart for me, Professor. <laughs> yeah, 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 I am. <laughs> well, I guess everyone got what they wanted. The Professor had Rico's cold fusion process, Rico had his skull in one piece, and everyone else got their smiling, foggy-minded, future kajillionaire sports star back. If you study hard and do your homework, you'll be dumber than a bag of hammers in no time. It is most fortuitous to have a fine chum such as yourself, Mosley. I mean, gee, thanks, Mo. By George, I think you've got it. Now then, Mosley, I finished your algebra homework. Nothing higher than a B plus as requested. Okay, so I'm getting him to help me with my math homework. Hey, I'm not stupid either, you know. Oh yeah, you're probably wondering if Rico's cold fusion process made Professor Kindly rich. Well, let's just say I made a call to a guy who knows some guys who work for a big oil company. Mine. <laughs> All mine. <laughs> oh, who are you? What do you want? No! No! <laughs> the human brain is pretty fascinating. I mean, did you ever wonder how you can remember the names, numbers, and stats of every player in the NBA no problem? but you can study all week for a math test. And as soon as it lands on your desk, you forget how to count to three. Ah! Let's face it, the brain has a very twisted sense of humor. Think about it. How can it come up with ideas like space flight, the pyramid, and triple fudge Sundays, then turn around and invent boy bands, group showers after gym, and bagpipes? Who knows what it will come up with next? Problem is, it can't be trusted. And unless it's in a jar, it's impossible to keep an eye on it. <laughs> hey, prepare to descend into the bowels of the most feared place on the planet. The school cafeteria. A sinister domain where bizarre concoctions are prepared and given to unsuspecting youth as part of a ritual torture known as daily lunch specials. Like mock shepherd's pie made from soy bean burger substitute on a spinach crust. Ugh. How about mixed lentils, asparagus, alfalfa sprouts wrapped in 14 grade flaxseed pita bread? We call it the bow blaster. You must be wondering what kind of twisted mastermind could come up with this. Good morning, Mosley. Oh, I see my vegetables have arrived. I'm just in time to... <laughs> After all, what's a salad without organically grown bok choy? Edible. Oh, don't be silly, dear. Bok choy is full of vitamins and minerals. Told you she was twisted. I mean, this stuff is actually good for you. Of course it is, dear. I wouldn't have it any other way. Which is why you should try today's special. It's something new. Uh, gee, uh, thanks, Miss B, but, uh, I brown bag it every day. Well, I, I gotta run for it. I mean, <laughs> bye. They can't run from proper nutrition forever. No one will be able to resist today's special mystery meat on dry. Yeah. What do you think it could be? Whatever it is, it looks kind of tasty. <gasps> Bite your tongue, Mimi! Tasty cafeteria food is an oxymoron. You know, like jumbo shrimp, or finished homework, or cleaned up room. All I'm saying is compared to Mrs. B's lentil puree, wheat germ fondue, or alfalfa barf or whatever, this is looking pretty good. And you have to admit, mystery meat does have a nice ring to it. Yeah. Mystery meat must taste. What is it with guys' table manners? You're like hogs at a trough. This stuff must taste better than it looks. What's the big idea, BB? Sorry, Mo. I need this for evidence. Billy Boone, BB for short. 
Evidence of a top-secret cover-up that reaches into the very highest offices of power. At this very moment, we are being primed for a worldwide takeover by... Aliens. Aliens. Any something? <laughs> Is this the one where Neptunians are liquidizing themselves so they can hide in our drinking water and suck us dry from the inside? Again? I'm going for seconds. Wait for me. This is the big one, Mo. A whole new alien ball game. It makes those Neptunians look like, like, like... Figments of a hyperactive imagination? All I can say is, there's more to mystery meat than meets the eye. But I can't say any more. It's better if you stay out of the loop for your own safety. I'm being followed. Maybe I should punch some air holes in that garbage can. Keep your eyes open, Mo, and remember, trust no one. This is bogus. Mrs. B is all out of mystery meat. Yeah, what a rip. Oh, well, at least I've got backup. Wouldn't anyone like to try the three bean salad or a nice bean sprout casserole instead? We want more mystery we meat. Want it's more awesome. Mystery meat. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So BB's belt might not go through all the loops, but I gotta admit, there really is something bizarre going on around here. No kidding, Mo. I mean, cafeteria food that tastes good? It's a miracle! A miracle? Maybe. Weird? Definitely. We all right, meat. children. There will be more mystery meat tomorrow. <laughs> Next morning, I decided to leave my trusty ham and cheese behind for the first time in my entire high school career. I feel naked. Just as long as you only feel naked. What took you? Come on, we gotta get in line. Where? Where else, man? The calf. Some kids camped out overnight so they could be first in line for mystery meat. Get a grip, it's just a sandwich. Huh. Easy for you to say. You haven't tried one yet. I wonder what makes mystery meat taste so good. Ah! A potent blend of mind-controlling chemicals and genetically engineered artificial flavoring manufactured using alien technology recovered from downed UFOs. That's what makes it taste so good. I don't think aliens would. Don't worry, Mo. It's only a matter of time before I blow this thing wide open. Hey, BB, check it out. This stuff glows in the dark, too. BB? Uh, it's all yours, uh, Mr. Prickle. I think you might want to go easy on this mystery meat stuff. Oh, yeah. Listen, guys, it's... It's is an elaborate alien plot to control the minds of the entire planet by feeding them a mind-altering agent cleverly disguised as prepackaged lunch meat. You want proof? Cast your orphan annies on these. Clandestine photos of the very leader of the multinational geopolitical intergalactic mystery meat cartel. Taken by yours truly at no small risk to my own personal safety. You're never getting that gum off your jacket, you know. Hey, I'm single-handedly saving the Earth from annihilation here. A little thank you might be in order. I'll eat that if you don't want it. Hitch, no! It's destroying your mind. Weren't you listening? Chill, it's only a sandwich. Exactly what Mrs. Batterwhip wants you to believe. Hold it. Are you saying Mrs. Batterwhip is an alien? Of course not. She's merely working for the aliens. Oh, come on, BB. Mrs. Batterwhip? Anyone capable of creating the Bowel Blaster is equally capable of being in league with... Ah. 
<laughs> the men in green! Yeah! They're after me! I know too much! Aren't they usually men in black? Hey, Mo, what's with the lunch bag? I decided to go back to brown bag and it's just a creature of habit, I guess. Don't tell me BB and his crazy conspiracy theories are getting to you. Again? Look, I know better than to get my hopes up. I learned my lesson last time when he said he had a Sasquatch trapped in the sewer and it turned out to be a hairy homeless guy. That was exactly what the Sasquatch wanted us to believe. How'd you get my locker combo? No time to explain. I need your help. Is this the same BB Boone whose motto is trust no one? Okay, okay. Trust no one except Mo. Happy? I will be as soon as I lay my hands on a few mystery meat breakfast sausages. See, Mo? These poor saps are already brainwashed. One word. Sasquatch. We'll, uh, save you a place in line. The end game has begun. It's the final countdown to oblivion. The signs are all around us. Junk food vending machines lie abandoned. The hot dog and french fry guys have gone bust. The masses are hooked on mystery meat! Get real. Mystery meat is just some kind of food fad. He'll die out soon enough. It's the human race that's gonna die out. But why would a bunch of aliens and high-powered industrialists be interested in the operation of a high school cafeteria? Even aliens have to do product testing. Today, Lone Pie High, and tomorrow, the planet. You gotta help me. The fate of the free world is in our hands. Oh, I just know I'm gonna hate myself in the morning. Okay, how can I help? I need a safe house. Rubber ducky to Mother Goose. Rubber ducky to Mother Goose. Come in, Mother Goose. Over. I will be roosting at Osley May Oville Maze. KOA on May. Hey, I know sleepovers are lame, but the cable's out. And BB is the next best thing to the sci fi channel. Affirmative. I am armed with toothbrush, tay, and ink clay underwear. A. Eight nay, eight nay on May. Trust no one. Yes, Mom, I trust you. All that stuff I said about not getting my hopes up, this is actually starting to get good. Well, it looks like BB might be onto something here. Do your worst, squid face! Hey, wake up! Wake up! Huh? Well, I do. Yeah! A man in. Blue? Teal. Who, who are you wor 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 working for? Never mind that. <gasps> Here you go, kid. The fate of the free world is in your hands. Told ya. Remember, trust no one. It's all here. Code names, Swiss bank accounts, the works. The men in green are working for a multinational corporation called SGA. SGA? What's that stand for? Wise up, Mo. Secretive Greedy Aliens. Works for me. Oh, there's plans for mystery meat drive throughs vending machines, heat and serve TV dinners, baby food. Even cat and dog food. Those fiends. It's time to blow this thing wide open. One thing aliens bent on world domination hate 
It's publicity. You got a phone card? By this time tomorrow, their heinous plot will be splashed across the headlines of the country's most reputable newspapers. Midnight Dirtbag, we pay gold for your dirt. Aliens are invading! Listen, kid, we already got too many alien stories. With mind-warping chemicals disguised as easy-to-prepare luncheon meats. Ooh, well that's a new twist. It's all part of a secret plot by a company called SGA. Secretive, greedy aliens. Ew. No! Oh, oh, what have I done? The phone was tapped. They must have traced the call. Oh, I, to, oh, I told her everything. What happened? They shot her. No way. Wise up, Mo. She knew too much, so they eliminated her. Well, I know too much, too. So do you. So does Mrs. Batterwhip. Professional nutritionist and official spokesperson for Mystery Meat! Come on, Bibi, we better go see her right away. <laughs> we'll confront the alien collaborator in her lair and make her spill her guts. No, we're gonna warn her! Mrs. Batterwhip might be in danger. I'm sorry to hear you're having second thoughts. That's the guy I was spying on. He's the brains behind the whole Mystery Meat cartel. Mr. Bigaroo. That's right, Mo. The main man, supreme leader, head honcho, top dog. If only we knew his name. That is his name. J.T. Bigaroo. It's right here in the files from the guy in blue. Deal. Whatever. It's just that I hate using my position of trust to deceive the children. You know very well secrecy is of the utmost importance to the success of our enterprise. But, but what about Billy Boone? He knows too much. <gasps> Don't worry, we'll take care of Billy and that Mobile kid too, if we ever find them. Perhaps this will convince you to... He's going for a gun! Doc, Mrs. Batterwhip! He's got... Cash? Mosley? Billy? Hold on, you two. Follow me, Mo. Children, wait! Hey! Where are you taking us? They're taking us to their top secret, secretive, greedy alien headquarters. <laughs> Okay, so it's not very secret. Couldn't I have a word with the boys first, before you take care of them? <sighs> very well, Mrs. Batterwhip. Come clean, if you must. Boys, I have a little confession to make. You see, Mystery Meat is really... A fiendish plot to take over the world using top-secret alien mind-control lunch meat technology. Oh, my... <laughs> Tofu slices called nearly bologna. Tofu? Yes, dear. Tofu. A bland, cheese-like food made from curdled soybean milk. Isn't tofu good for you? That's why I invented the name Mystery Meat. I was afraid if kids knew it was good for them, they'd turn their noses up. A fabulous marketing strategy, Mrs. Batterwhip. You see, boys, I own a company called SGA, which stands for... Secret of Greedy Aliens. Well, I suppose that works. But try Soybean Growers Alliance. Guess we should have actually read the letterhead. I'm sorry for triggering such a panic, dear. Ha! If you're not an alien, then why have your evil henchmen been following me all over town, huh? Well, they were trying to protect you from this man. Oh, what a lovely outfit. Is that teal? As if you didn't know. He works for a company called SBS, the Simulated Beef Sawdust Company. They supply school cafeterias with hamburger patties made of 2% meat and 98% sawdust. They would stop at nothing to sabotage mystery meat, including industrial espionage and misleading an impressionable youth. But, uh, what did you mean when you said you were going to 
take care of us. Yeah, we know too much, right? Just watch, Mo. We'll be sliced and diced into mystery meat. Am I right? Huh? Am I? Well? That would hardly pass health inspection. Uh, ever heard of stock options? Once mystery meat is launched worldwide, the stock price of SGA will go through the roof. You'll be rich, as will we all. All I ask in return is your silence about the tofu. Do we understand each other? No aliens? No plot to take over the world? No mind control? Oh, well, we'll just have to settle for being filthy rich. You fiends! Mo, do you know what this means? Yeah, I'm putting in a swimming pool. No, mystery meat is tofu! Mystery meat is tofu! Mystery meat is tofu! Mystery meat is tofu! Huh? Tofu? <laughs> tofu. I knew it was too good to be true. Yeah. This junk is good for us. What? Hi. Tofu? Yeah. That's healthy! Yeah. What's the idea? Yeah. 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 Well, that was the end of mystery meat. Not to mention my dreams of a swimming pool. Still, there was one thing I couldn't figure out. Mrs. Batherwick, so what made Mystery Meat glow in the dark? It glowed in the dark? It's funny how some people are grossed out by stuff others think are delicacies. One person's garden pest is another's escargot. From Scotland, we've got haggis, a boiled cheap stomach stuffed with mint's internal organs and oatmeal. In Japan, they love sushi. Raw fish served on rice. In China, they make bird's nest soup using real bird nest. I'll just have a glass of milk. Of course, when you think about it, Milk is a lot of grass that's been chewed up and processed through a cow. Guess you never know what you're gonna like until you try it. But I wonder who had the guts to try all this stuff first. <laughs> nice day, huh? Well, enjoy it while it lasts, because tomorrow we'll undergo the most grisly torture imaginable. The assignment is due tomorrow, and you will present them orally in front of the rest of the class. Oh. What'd I tell you? Whoa, looks like you're getting the shakes already. <laughs> oh, oral presentation? Can school get any more brutal? My family tree. Can it get any more boring? Hey, guys, instead of just talking about our ancestors, let's bring them to class. No way. I'm not going grave robbing. Yeah. Remember last time? Kindergarten show and tell will never be the same. Who said anything about grave robbing? Huh? <laughs> Raising the dead for idiots? You're kidding. A seance? Not only is it entertaining, we can let the spirits of our ancient ancestors do all the talking. I'm beginning to see the beauty. And one large candle made from the earwax of a dyspeptic albino rhinoceros. No extra charge. Thanks, Lizzie. Will it help us summon spirits of the dead? No, but it adds atmosphere. <sighs> hmm. Lavender with just a hint of rhino earwax. From the four corners of the globe, we call up our loved ones past to hear their stories, this spell we cast. Those from beyond who wish to make contact enter our spirit circle. It says we have to join hands. Are they making a presentation or going on a date? <laughs> <laughs> Ancestors from beyond, I beseech thee, reveal thyself to insert name here. <laughs> I mean, reveal thyself to Mo, Hitch, and Mimi.
Huh? I knew I should have been an airline stewardess. Here it is, troubleshooting. Should spirits fail to appear, try a more forceful approach. Ancient spirits, I command you to reveal thyself! At least give us a sign! Ah, oh, class dismissed. Now we know why it's called raising the dead for idiots. Huh? Give up, Mo. It's over. A bust. I didn't do anything. It's freezing in here. Spirits may be accompanied by a sudden drop in the temperature. Hello? Is someone here? I'll take that as a yes. She's a witch. Burn her. She cavorts with she the devil. And maiden. Who are you? I Holy was that? Well, one thing's for sure. It wasn't boring. Right, Mimi? Mimi. Hey, Earth to Mimi. Hmm? What? Still say the seance was a bust? No. Disaster is more like it. Debacle is good. Oh, and let's not forget embarrassing. She must have been so scared she blanked out. Happens to me all the time in algebra class. Hmm. Mary? Margaret? We're gonna have to do a little dinging. Ah, uh, I knew we'd get around to grave robbing eventually. Who said anything about grave robbing? We're going to the teacher's lounge. No way! You're a madman! <laughs> uh, could we talk to Mrs. Cornbuckle for a second? We wanted to ask you a history question. Here's the key to the library. I'm a firm believer in teaching students to teach themselves. Especially when I'm holding an inside straight. <laughs> You're staying after class and you don't even have a detention? You really are a madman. Hey, Mimi, come on. We're going on a witch hunt. <laughs> Your deal, Cornbuckle. Everyone ante up. I've got a ton of hits on witches and witchcraft, but nothing tied in with Ouija Falls yet. You guys having any luck? Shh. I'm just getting to the good part. Helen, the good little witch, is using her magic to help Squirrely Squirrel gather nuts. Thanks, Hitcha. Very helpful. Wait, here we go. The Ouija Falls Witch Trials. <gasps> it went down sometime in the 1690s. Thirteen young girls... Burned at the stake for practicing witchcraft? Heinous. And get this, not long after the trial, the courthouse burned to the ground. It says, the town fathers built a one-room school on the old foundation, which was added to over the years, and eventually became Lone Pine High. They built this place on ground zero of the witch burnings. That explains why the spirit of a witch was hanging out in our history class. Maybe that also explains the cafeteria's burnt meatloaf special. When the courthouse went up in smoke, so did all the records. We won't be able to find out the spirit's name. It starts with M-A-R. Margaret? Mary? Marjorie? Martha. How about Marion? Martha. Okay, okay. I'm writing it down already. Hey, there's my algebra face again. You feeling all right, Mimi? I am Martha. Yeep. Oh, I think we've got company. Martha. Are you, I mean, were you really a witch? No, I am innocent, innocent! Wait, Martha, come back! Hey, what's the big idea and who's Martha? Your deal, Cornbuckle. Auntie 
up, Principal Pigeon. I swear, you were channeling a spirit named Martha. Yeah, right. Why don't you leave the dopey comedy routines to Hitch? Get away, you flea bag! Shoo! Shoo! Uh, I'm a Shoo! dog person! Shoo! Hey, Mimi! Let's have another seance tomorrow. I'll bring the video cam and you... No! Will you give it a... A... A rest! Hey, Mom. I'll be a little late. Yeah, I'm with Mo. No, we're not in the cemetery. Baseball with normal kids? Mom, who says baseball is normal? Uh, I... Uh, uh, it's all yours! Your mother isn't here? Hey, I thought you were leaving the Dolby comedy routines to me. It's a telephone. <laughs> we use it to communicate. Everyone in town has their name, number, and address listed in this book. Hey! Mimi knows how a phone works, Mo. Yeah, but that's not Mimi. Huh? Hello, Martha. Yeah! Please, I beseech thee, do not tell them I am a witch. You mean you really are? Or were? Nay, the charges were false. I was but a young and winsome lass, innocent to the ways of the world. Then one day, a horrible man demanded my hand in matrimony. When I refused, he flew into a rage. He vowed that if he could not have me, then no man would. He accused me of witchcraft. No, Caleb! A total slime ball. I never a more vile creature walked the face of this earth than Caleb Moville. Hey, what a coincidence. Mo's name is also... I can't believe that creep was one of my ancestors. Yeah, he wasn't exactly a looker, was he? Sheesh. I'm talking about the evil part. We better not tell Martha I'm related to that Caleb guy. She'll get spooked again. She'll get spooked? So, uh, Martha, why don't you let me show you around the 21st century? If t'would not be an imposition, I would dearly love to see the beautiful meadow where I used to pick wildflowers. Are you sure this is where it was? I, I'm sure it was here. I was raised in a small cottage next to a beautiful lake. Tis true, much has changed. I know a place where you feel right at home. Check this out. Whoa, don't step in that. Don't worry. <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> Have we come a long way since the Dark Ages or her what? <laughs> hmm. She doesn't impress easily, does she? Eye of newt, powdered lizard tongue, juice of bat's boil. Why, tis the makings of witchcraft. Amazing, huh? People are a lot more tolerant of alternative lifestyles and religions nowadays. So, even if you are a witch, it's totally cool. Cool? That means fine. <laughs> Did you say something funny? I guess so. <laughs> but something tells me this is no laughing matter. Too bad Mimi's not here to see this. Uh, <laughs> what's so funny, anyway? You are, you pathetic reason! <laughs> Are you sure that's not Mimi? <laughs> Cockroach eyelashes, powdered spider eyes, warthog nose hairs. <laughs> not an innocent young pilgrim girl either. We've been suckered by an evil spirit. Ooh, I hate it when that happens. Oh, hello, boys. How was the seance? It was, uh, interesting. A disaster! Ouija foes will suffer for what they did to me, and none will suffer more than the descendants of that meddling do-gooder. 
Caleb Mulvey. Hey, what a coincidence. Mo's name is... Okay, Martha. Visiting hours are over. Time to go back to... wherever. Yeah, we want Mimi back, okay? Quit hogging her. Back off, or I will turn you into a pair of lovebirds. <gasps> Sorry. Booker from Platypus Bill, help me fly this broom and will. <laughs> oh dear. It's witches like that who give the rest of us a bad name. You're a witch? A member in good standing of the Witches' Union, local G-1306. All right! Whip up a potion and turn that psycho old hag into a horned toad. Or a cockroach. Or something evil. Like a hamster. The G stands for good witches, dear. We don't do that sort of thing. Besides, if you turn Martha into a hamster, you turn Mimi into a hamster. Man, these things are never as easy as they should be. First, return Mimi to the portal where the spirit entered this realm. Check. Get her back to Mrs. K's classroom. Then what? You must drive the spirit from Mimi's body. Once it is separated from its earthly host, it will be drawn back through the portal from whence it came. Hmm. Okay, I have a plan, but we'll need some supplies. This ought to do the trick. <laughs> and three cans of tuna. No charge. Thanks, Lizzie. Smell you later. Ah, I don't even like tuna. <laughs> Here, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> <laughs> The Movils. A curse on Caleb Movil B and all his vile progeny. <sighs> Granny, you all right? Oh, I'm fine, dear. What are you doing home so late? Just finishing up some uh history homework. Have you ever heard of a guy named Caleb Movil? Oh, he's your great, 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 great grandfather. He saved Ouija Falls from a coven of evil witches, you know. Oh, he was quite the hero. <laughs> Not much of a looker, though. Until a few minutes ago, I thought Caleb was the evil one, and the witches were innocent victims. Maybe so. Of course, that's not the way they tell it in our family. Oh, dear. We must have blown a fuse. Oh, hello, Mimi. Well, I guess I'll leave you two kids alone. No hijinks, though, or shenanigans. What, what are you doing here? Don't try to stop, stop me, you foolish, foolish child. My name is Mosley. Mosley Moville. You? A Moville? Caleb was my great, 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 maybe one more great grandfather. And I'm proud of it, so do your worst. <laughs> With pleasure. But you have to catch me first. Huh? You shall suffer even more, more hideously for this. <sighs> Hey, 
Philip Moville. I swore revenge when last we met, and now I shall have it! <laughs> Better hit the road to the afterworld, Martha. Here come the reinforcements. <laughs> but you shall both suffer a hideous end. I'll... I know, Mimi. And it's a good thing, too. You see, we had to... Never mind. Achoo! I don't think I even want to... No. You think I might have overdone it with tuna? Oh! Ow! Hey, that tickles! <laughs> you just like my old girlfriend! Now I know how it feels to be put through a belt sander. Achoo! Uh, achoo! Uh, are you sure that was the only way to get achoo! rid of her? Martha left us no choice. Besides, I had a family rep to uphold. Hey guys, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be fun to get in touch with Caleb? You know, hear his side of the story firsthand? No! no. Huh. I wonder what got into them. <laughs> Three of a kind beats two pair. <laughs> oh, you devious, duplicitous, guileful, underhanded... You know, Mrs. Cornbuckle, I've never noticed what lovely green eyes you have. They really sparkle and glow when you're angry. <laughs> <laughs> Mother shipped and lived in the 15th century. Apparently, she had a knack for predictions. Nowadays, we'd call her a psychic and she'd have her own phone in show. But back then, people called her a witch. And in those days, they thought all witches were evil. Guess they weren't called the Dark Ages for nothing. They say she made a prediction about a big shot named Cardinal Wolseley that really ticked him off. So he vowed to have her severely punished as soon as he got to the city of York. But just before he got there, Wolseley was arrested on charges of high treason. Oh yeah, her prediction was that Cardinal Wolseley would never reach the city of York. Even the big shots left her alone after that. They were never totally sure. Did Mother Shipton predict the future or cause it? <laughs> Look at that harvest moon. It's awesome. Actually, I prefer to think of it as a vampire moon, a blood-red harbinger of evil. You are so romantic. Is there anything you don't think of as a harbinger of evil? What can I say? I'm a glasses half full kind of guy. And I'm gonna be a totally full kind of guy. <laughs> Whoa! Mosquito, it's six o'clock. Oh. He's on my tail! Head for the zapper! Fly into the light! Fly into the light! <laughs> Eat blue electric death, you little blood sucker. Oh! Gross! If I wanted sprinkles, I would have ordered them. What? They're toasted! Ah! Stupid mosquitoes, go ruin somebody else's beautiful evening! They're only doing what comes naturally plunging their serrated proboscis into your skin to extract warm, protein-rich blood to brood their young. Moe's Diner, open 24-7. Hey, let's not get greedy. Leave some for me. Let's get out of here! Mm. 
Wait for me! Easy, fellas. There's plenty more where those came from. Give or take a few billion. Ah! Somebody pass the calamine lotion. Stat! Well, class, thanks to Mimi Valentine's letter-writing campaign, we won't be dissecting live frogs today after all. Yes! Awesome. Instead, we've blown our entire budget on three dozen virtual frogs. Which means there will be no field trip to the wild, wild wet water park this year. Aww. Oh, come on. You guys would gladly pass on a trip to some goofy water park if it means sparing the lives of cute little innocent creatures, right? No. no. Well, my conscience is clear. Yeah! Man, these virtual frogs might be humane, but they're also totally nerve-wracking. Hey, Mo, have a heart. I wonder what's going on. I've never seen them this bad. It's like a mosquito plague. Sometimes plagues are brought in by curses. In your dreams, Mo. Of course, for most people, it'd be in their nightmares. It is kind of beautiful, isn't it? Who can tell? I can barely see the moon through the clouds of pesky mosquitoes. I was talking about the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes? Beautiful? In a gut-churning, skin-crawling, gross-out kind of way. Oh! Oh! Sorry, guys. Must be the full moon. <laughs> Styling bug hat hitch really makes a statement. Yeah, doofus. Hey, it was the best I could come up with on such short notice. <laughs> Told him the screen is nose holes. Hey, come back here. Where do you think you're going with my blood? Check that out. Royal Exterminators. We send bugs to the grave. Call 555 I Hate Bugs. Sounds like this guy means business. You can say that again. Big business. You've got that I ain't buying it tone in your voice. Give. First, we have a plague of mosquitoes. And suddenly, a new exterminator arrives in town. Huh, <laughs> quite a coincidence, wouldn't you say? What coincidence? He kills bugs. We got bugs. Mega bugs. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Ah, wise guy. Let's get out of here before we're eaten alive. Mm, technically, they don't eat us. They just drain our blood. Whatever. Whoa, that's nasty. No, 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 don't scratch it. You'll make it worse. Here, try some calamine lotion. Must be hungry after such a long trip. <clears throat> well, Mother, how do you like our new home? Okay, before that exterminator guy got here, the mosquitoes were pretty bad. But now, they're even worse. Which means business is really buzzing for you know who. <laughs> they got Mrs. Pretty. Oh, and her little dog. <laughs> <laughs> 
to... Who knows? The swarm might be ten times worse if the exterminator hadn't shown up when he did. It's possible. But there's something about that guy that just bugs me. <laughs> Get it? Something about that guy bugs him? <laughs> Ow! Thought I saw a bug. Did someone say bugs? Mosley, this is Mr. Royal. He's here to fumigate the house. So, uh, working overtime, Mr. Royal? I mean, it's pretty late to be on the job, isn't it? For some, but I prefer to work the graveyard shift. Shouldn't we clear out or put on some gas masks or something? <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Royal, wait! How much do I owe you? There is no charge. I always provide my services for free. Well, now, isn't that nice? Hmm. Isn't that weird? Okay. On the left, bug dust. On the right, nothing. Release the test subjects, Mimi. Ten out of ten mosquitoes agree. Things go better with bug dust. You were right. The swarm is getting worse, and that exterminator guy is attracting them. can't even demand our money back because he works for free. But if he's not making a pile of money, what's in it for him? Maybe if we find out where the exterminator came from, we can figure out where all this is going. Scampyville. He's from Scampyville? No, he was just passing through. I searched a bunch of newspaper archives for any towns reporting a mosquito population boom. Then I called up their business directories to see if there was a listing for royal exterminators. And bingo! <laughs> Oh, it makes me nervous when he gets all giddy like this. Wait a second. Isn't Scampyville a ghost town? And so are Starfish Cove, Beaver Creek, and Harbor Vista. This is creepy. It's as if they've been eaten alive by the swarm. Technically, they don't eat you. They okay, just... okay, drained alive. Exactly. He's not in it for the money. He's in it for the blood. The swarm is the perfect diversion. What's a couple more bite marks on your neck when well, you're already covered in them, right? <laughs> Nobody will ever suspect what he's really up to. And there's no one left to warn his next victims. Ghost towns tell no tales. I guess the clothes should have been a dead giveaway too. No pun intended. And the kicker is, he only works at night. It all adds up. Uh, help me out here, guys. Uh, you know, I'm lousy at math. He's, He's a, a vampire. vampire! Ah. I knew these broken hockey sticks would come in handy one day. I've got a silver cross and the holy water. And I've got a rake. A rake? That's for chasing Frankenstein. I thought you were bringing garlic. All we had was garlic salt. Come, my pretties. Mother is waiting. The full ones are all heading out of town. And the ones coming back are empty. Coming back for a free refill. Take us to your blood-sucking leader. Hey, wait up, guys. Ah, my board isn't uh, uh, built for uh, off-roading. I told you, a bike is more practical. Ah, but a skateboard will get you more style points. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Styling. Oh, did you get the number of that bug that hit me? Okay, let's stop this creep before he turns Ouija Falls into a ghost town. All the windows have been painted black. Makes sense. Vampires don't like sunlight. Hey, 
Yeah. So why don't we wait for the daylight? That would be the easy way, but it wouldn't be the Mo way. Lock and load. You know, this vampire has an awful bug problem. He should call an exterminator. <laughs> All right. Jackpot! Uh-oh. He's giddy again. On three. One, two. Come to pay your last respects. Mm hmm? Well, so much for the element of surprise. Okay, hunting vampires isn't all that different from going camping. Rule number one, be prepared. Let him have it! <coughs> Are you sure that was holy water? I'm sure it was holy water. Are you sure he's a vampire? Foolish children. Think you can save your pathetic little village? But it was all adding up. He works at night. Everyone drained of blood. Don't forget the get-up. He even has a casket. Yeah! You can add superhuman strength. You shall pay for this meddling in blood. Every last drop. But you're not a vampire. Why would you want our blood? It is not I who craves it. Don't tell me you're doing this just for fun. Indeed not. Mine is a truly noble calling. It all began when I was but a young child. It usually does. <clears throat> My biological mother and father were two highly devoted field botanists. One day, while on an expedition deep into the heart of an uncharted rainforest, I became hopelessly lost. I've heard of stories like this. Were you raised by wolves or apes? Luckily, no. I find the parenting skills of mammals to be very substandard. I suffered innumerable dangers, unimaginable hardship. And then, just as it seemed I was fated to become another small link in the food chain, I was rescued by the Mosquito Queen, who comforted me and raised me as one of her own. And so, I have devoted my life to calling down the great swarm which gathers fresh blood to slake the thirst of my glorious queen. Whoa! Instead of being suckled by a mother wolf or ape, this guy was suckled by a giant mosquito. Huh? Huh? Uh. But there's still a few things that don't quite add up. Why work only at night and paint the windows black? And what's with the casket? Enough questions! You're becoming quite an annoying little pest, and for that, you shall have the honor of being the first to be exterminated. I still say somebody around here has got to be a vampire. I knew it! For a minute there, I thought I was losing my touch. No! How dare you attack the queen! Vampire queen! Is it? Obviously, being suckled by a giant mosquito can have a weird effect on a guy. And not just mentally. Come on! Follow me! I've got an idea!
that? Uh, not quite. Oh, yeah. The Mosquito Queen. Uh... Faster, Mo! Faster! She's not as out of shape as she looks! I'm crepping up. You have the pedal. Four bit. Hang on, Mo! World's biggest mosquito. Meet the world's biggest bug light. <laughs> Gets him every time. Hang on, Mimi. I don't want to miss this. Gets him every time, too. Ah! Whoa! Careful! Don't get any on you. of a man-eating tiger, the thundering charge of a rhino, the trumpet of a rogue elephant. Sounds that would send chills up any normal spine were music to the ears of Sir Hugo Upswitch. He was fearless, not to mention armed and dangerous. But one night, he heard the sound that never fails to trigger mindless terror. The world's biggest game hunter was finally brought down by a malaria-infected mosquito. The mosquito, Mother Nature's most diabolical creation or her best defense against us. Bizarre stories are everywhere. All you have to do is look in the right places and you'll find them. Or sometimes, if you're lucky, they find you. Want me to save his brains? Well, of course, I'll need him to make a pie. We can toast the seeds in the oven with a little salt. That was one of my favorite treats when I was a girl. <laughs> of course, back in the good old days, we didn't have all the fancy candies and chocolate bars like you kids have today. Ever notice, no matter how tough your grandparents had it when they were kids, they still call them the good old days? Now, you nasty, nasty things. Dirty, dirty, dirty <laughs> birds. Check this out. You don't have the whole weeds anymore. With this baby, you annihilate them. Real comfortable sitting here.
Yo, Mo! Huh? Hitch? What's up? We gotta get down to the Burger Genie pronto! I'm gonna chow down big time and it won't cost a cent! We'll grant your wish or you eat for free. That's the Burger Genie's guarantee. See the beauty? But Burger Genie won't serve us unless we're in a car, remember? Oh, man. There's always a catch. <sighs> I could use a nice cold drink about now. A trip to the Burger Genie might be just the thing. <laughs> Thanks, Granny M. You rock. Thank you, dear. I think. Of course, we never had such thing as drive through restaurants when I was a girl. <laughs> they wouldn't have done much business seeing how there weren't any cars. <laughs> Guess that's why I like to call them the good old days. <laughs> why, do you know we had to walk five miles just to get to school? And all this was nothing but forest as far as the eye could see. So you've told me, Granny, about a million times. Kind of hard to believe this was all forest. I am the Burger Genie. Your wish is my command. Two mega colas and hold the ice. I wish for a great green gob of uh, greasy, grimy gopher guts with french fried uh, eyeballs on the side. Would you like to jumbo size those eyeballs? Your total is six dollars and twenty-five cents. Please pull up to the first window. Thank you for eating it, Burger Genie. Whoa, the Burger Genie really did grant me your wish? Huh? I'd love to see what it was really like back in the good old days. Huh? Here's your drink, Mosley. Mosley? Where'd he go? Must have run inside to use the facilities. You know, back in the good old days, we didn't put our facilities indoors. <laughs> hmm. Folks were a lot friendlier back then, too. Ah, put a sock in it, you old grumpy pants. Well, I guess Granny wasn't exaggerating after all. One thing you can say for the good old days, it's got plenty of atmosphere. <clears throat> huh? Class dismissed. Oh, hurry, children. It's getting dark. What is it, Dobbin? Hello? Help! Oh, we're done for! I didn't mean to. Whoa! <laughs> Funny. From what Granny told me, I was expecting a bit warmer welcome.
<laughs> it's him! I thought he was here. Ow! Hey, that hurts. <gasps> Who is him anyway? You'll find out soon enough. Come on, we gotta hide! <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll hang around a while. But if I were you, I'd run for it. <laughs> hey, if I don't get out of this alive, tell Hitch you can have my glass eye collection. <laughs> Thanks. Don't mention it. Hurry! Where'd he go? All clear! Phew! <sighs> now what? Guess we'll have to walk home. In the dark? I say we stay put. Is it really five miles to town? Uh, no. It's more like seven. The name's Mitch. Mo. This is all your fault, moron! We'd be safe at home if you hadn't scared off the school, Mom! Leave him be, Zach. He's new here. Betty's the name. Betty Butterworth. <gasps> What's the matter? Looks like you've seen a ghost. No, I'm fine. I was just a little surprised because Betty's my granny's name. What brings you to these parts? Nobody comes to Ouija Falls anymore. Not unless you got a death wish. I just wanted to check it out for myself. I've heard so much about the friendly people, the beautiful countryside. The nights of mine, numb and terror. Actually, that part's new. But I'd love to hear more. What's the story with this pumpkin guy anyway? Well, it all started last Halloween, around midnight. It was closer to 11. On a full moon. A bunch of us snuck over to mean old Farmer Dale's place to snatch a couple of pumpkins. <laughs> it's kind of a tradition. Just having a little fun. It's not like he didn't have plenty to spare. But this year, he was ready for us. He made the ugliest, meanest looking scarecrow we've ever seen. I just remembered I had chores to do. <laughs> I reckon Farmer Dell didn't take kindly to us laughing at his scarecrow. Ugh. He was in a black mood, that's for sure. <clears throat> Next thing we know, he's putting some kind of voodoo hex on us. <clears throat> he always was a mean old grouch. <clears throat> Still, he should have known better than to go throwing hexes during a lightning storm. That supercharged voodoo mojo hit the scarecrow right twixt the eyes. <gasps> and that's how the pumpkin reaper was born. <laughs> Whoa, that's awesome. Uh, I mean, 
You know, as in horrible awesome. You got that right. The Reaper won't quit till he's scared every last one of us home. Or every last one of us has a pumpkin head. <sighs> I'm afraid it won't be long before Ouija Falls is nothing but dust and forgotten memories. Well, then what are we waiting for? We're waiting for daylight, moron! The Reaper only rise at night. Exactly. We can't catch him hiding here. The new kid's right. We have to make a stand. You guys keep saying we, and I, I'm just... the good old days would be born without TV and video games. <laughs> I'm really starting to wonder about these so-called good old days. Like, I wonder why Granny's never mentioned this pumpkin reaper guy before. I never thought she'd keep something this good all to herself. The way I see it, he's nothing but an overgrown weed. You know, when you put it that way, he doesn't seem so scary. Yeah. It'll be like doing the gardening, right? Right. And I have just the thing for the job. I'm sure this is where I left it. Left what? That! <laughs> if we stick together, we can... Run! Baby sure can slice and dice. <laughs> there, there, Pearl. It's not that bad. Violet! What happened? Oh, yeah. Pumpkin Reaper. He doesn't usually claim more than one a night. Why's he got so greedy all of a sudden? <laughs> It's the weed trimmer. He's like a kid with a new toy. A very evil kid with a very dangerous toy. <laughs> I sure hope he didn't get sack. I guess the girls always go for the troublemakers. Zack! I'm so glad you're safe. Who are you scowling at? I wasn't scared. Oh, Zack. We all know how brave you are. Why, you're not afraid of anything. This is sickening. Awful chilly in here, isn't it? Good idea. I'll go get us some firewood for the stove. Mitch, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Giving him that weed trimmer was like handing a caveman a bazooka. This could mess up the whole future of Ouija Falls. You're so brave and strong and handsome. And that could mess up the future of the whole Moville clan. Okay, that's it. Break it up before I hurl. Get lost, moron! She's my girl! She is not! She has to marry somebody nice and kind. Somebody like, oh, I don't know, my grandpa. Land sakes, Mo. You don't really think I'm sweet on that loud-mouthed, dim-witted bully, do you? What a relief. 
But what are you up to? Well, if we're going fishing for the Pumpkin Reaper, we have to use the right bait. I have to hand it to Granny. She was pretty devious. This'll do nicely. Why are we stopping here? I thought you said we were going to make Hell Creek. I, I can't wait that long. Now, shut your eyes and pucker up, you stud. relying on modern technology. <laughs> yeah! Time for plan B. Anyone for pumpkin pie? We broke the hex! <gasps> Granny, what? No! Oh. Huh? What? Oh, whoa. That was one weird dream? Looks like that fancy weed trimmer of yours has seen better days. Um, yeah. I, I guess you could say that. Well, now, in my day, things were built to last. Why, I remember once when I was just a girl, we... Oh, well, you must be tired of hearing me go on and on about the good old days. Are you kidding? I can never get tired of your stories. In fact, I wouldn't dream of it. All right, then. Why don't we take a lemonade break and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, time travel is possible. All you have to do is figure out a way to move faster than the speed of light. But once you're back there, you really have to watch your step, or you might change the future as you've known it. Yeah, it'd be a blast, wouldn't it? There's another theory that says you wouldn't change the future at all, you'd actually create a whole new parallel universe. I know what you're thinking. Why stop at just one? We could create a million different universes. That means a million me's, a million you's, a million gizzards, a million wedgies. Let's hope scientists never solve that speed of light thing. Signs? Um, yeah, that's good. But I'm talking about signs. You know, omens? Like, if you find a four-leaf clover, it's supposed to bring good luck, right? But what does a ten-leaf clover bring? And Granny says, when wooly bear caterpillars have extra thick coats, it means there's gonna be a hard winter. But this year, they're butt naked. Random coincidence? A result of unusually high sunspot activity? Or Mother Nature's way of saying, heads up, right before she throws us a wicked curveball. <coughs> Whatever's going on, it's already having strange effects on the lower order species. What you looking at? Ah! Zappo. Oh, birdies. <laughs> See what I mean? Gizzard had me right in the crosshairs, and he didn't give me a wedgie. I'm sure this is all building up to something big. 
But what? Should we buy lottery tickets? Or start stocking a bomb shelter? Ah, Mom! Relax. That's not an air raid siren. It's just the call of one of Mother Nature's most mysterious and unpredictable creatures. The teenager. Alyssa Crystal Dryden, get the gum out of the mouth, stop slouching, and for the hundredth time, no roller skating in the house. Technically, I'm like not in the house, okay? Anyway, you're just ragging me because I'm going to get my navel pierced. For the thousandth time, no daughter of mine is going to get her navel pierced. But mom, I can't go to the concert like this. <gasps> of course you can't, dear. Because you're not going to the concert. Uh You know the rules, Beverly. No concerts on a school night. Daddy said I could go. You know he's not in full control of his faculties. Ever since we got that satellite dish. Aww! Uh -huh. Mom! He's too old for you, Veronica. Ramon says age is just a meaningless bourgeois trip. I'll give him a trip. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, nothing out of the ordinary going on here. They are totally unreasonable. Yeah, this is so unfair. Totally. Whoa! Is that a library book? I've never seen Hitch read anything that wasn't a comic. Something is definitely out of whack around here. You can almost feel it in the air. Could this be, like, any more tragic? Hello? It's only the end of the world? Totally our lives will be over. We have got to get to that concert. Hi, Ramon. So, you girls going to the Instinct concert Thursday night? Wouldn't miss it, Ramon. Cool. I will see you foxes there. Situation desperate, girls. We need a plan or something. Ow! What's this? Ew! Ew! Gross! Oh, yuck! Who's the dipstick? You are correct, Mosley. This is the most unusual collection of signs and portents. Any idea what these portents portend, Lizzie? We must consult the knowledge of the ancients. What is it? A book of prophecies? An original edition of Uncle Elmer's Almanac. Aha! Each sign heralds the arrival of a grand celestial event. The ten-leaf clover foretells the total eclipse of the moon, accompanied by the arrival of a comet. <gasps> Naked caterpillars portend an alignment of all the planets, coupled with the arrival of a comet last seen in the time of the pharaohs. <gasps> Squid falling from the sky herald the summer solstice, accompanied by... A comet. Uh, and that is the most powerful and ancient omen of all. The stars and planets hold powers we cannot imagine or explain. They can affect us in very mysterious ways. <gasps> This could be the chance of a lifetime. It's like the chance of a lifetime. Veronica and Beverly are going. Alyssa and Beverly are going. Alyssa and Veronica are going? You are not going to that concert. Ah, it's not fair. Life isn't fair, dear. <laughs> Tension is high here at the men's Peruvian stick bolting finals. <laughs> Ten o'clock! Ten o'clock!
o'clock. I mean it. According to modern science, a comet is a huge ball of dust and ice following an elliptical orbit around the sun. They could hold clues to the origins of the whole galaxy. Of course, to the ancient prophets, it's a sign. An omen that signals the beginning of... the end. Ever since humankind climbed down out of the trees, or crawled out of the swamp, or whatever. We gaze at the night sky to ponder its meaning. And mostly, it scared the pants off us. It is foretold by the ancient oracle that three sister comets shall converge and travel together as one. Upon their meeting, whosoever doth make a wish so it shall be granted. Beware! We are so doomed. We might as well just go live in a cave somewhere. Our moms are so archaic. Hello. This isn't the Dark Ages anymore, in case they haven't noticed. Oh, hey, look. A shooting star. Somebody, like, make a wish. OK. I wish our moms would stop being such total moms. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one. You go, Alyssa. I wish our moms would get off our case. Yeah. <laughs> There's one more. My turn. I wish our moms could be cool. Like us. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost 10, we'd better get going. Last time I missed curfew, my mom flipped right out. You would have thought the world was ending or something. They are totally Well, they say eventually all good things must come to an end. Check it out. Bet you nobody's ever seen anything like this. At least nobody who would have lived to tell about it. Okay, so maybe it wasn't the end of the universe. Not in the big sense. Then again, we all live in our own little private universe, right? Beverly? Beverly? Yes, Mother. Cool tunes! Alyssa, eight o'clock. Oh, Mom, can't I sleep in a little bit longer? Of course, honey. Thanks. Mom? Veronica, you're not going out of the house dressed like that. Mother! Don't you think the hemline is just a little too, like, long? <laughs> yeah, I do. Totally. And then she even helped me shorten it. My mom started playing instinct at like about 10,000 decibels. We heard. Do you realize what this means? Our moms are like having a simultaneous midlife crisis or something. You think they've finally seen the error of their ways? Maybe they're finally developing a conscience. Okay, I'm beginning to get nervous. Tell me about it. Totally. Like, what's for supper? Didn't have time. Can't you and the girls go out for a pizza or something? Cool. Hello. Finally. I've been on hold for, like, ever. I want three primo tickets to Instinct. Right. Front row center? Oh, I'm putting it on plastic? 
Yeah. Front row? No way! Does my mom rock or what? Mine too! Tonight when I said I was going out, she didn't say anything about curfew. Neither did mine. Hello? School night? No curfew? Could I have a reality check at table one, please? <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else find this to be somewhat, like, freaky? Totally. Our moms are cool. You don't think maybe... I wish our moms could be cool. Nah. Maybe we should have made a wish. We might have missed our big chance at peace on Earth. Or an end to world hunger. Then again, I've read enough sci-fi to know how this kind of stuff can really backfire. Like, totally. just work here. And I'm like, hello? Not only are you gonna get me those tickets, you're gonna do better than that, you clueless dipstick. Mom, have you seen- Clueless dipstick? Jill, you rock. So, what do you say? <gasps> no way. Chinese takeout for breakfast? No way. <gasps> you dare? Way cool. Uh, I'm there, and I am so made over. It looks like the Brizzy Boatman's croc has crawled onto the pitch. <sighs> Keen gives up the ball. Oh, now that's gotta hurt. The AFL, brought to you by Tinny. You need a 10 to win. Dad, Mom's acting crazy, and she won't get off the phone. Now, the crazy thing about Australian rules football is, um, uh, they don't have any rules. <laughs> okay, I'm beginning to get nervous. I can't get my mom off the phone long enough to talk to her for like one second. Tell me about it. I have goosebumps. What do we do? I guess we just pick up the tickets at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I thought those buzzkills would like never leave. Oh, right. Let's listen to some tunes. Party! Rock on! I think the Naval Noodle is so totally cool. Let's do it. We can show them off at tonight's concert. Our moms will freak. Don't you get it? Now is the perfect time. They'll let us do whatever we want, right? Totally! Girl power! If I showed them my tattoo, they'd like faint. Totally. Hey, foxy ladies. Hi, Ramon. Hello, he's talking to us. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets. The guy said they were already picked up by some trashy chick with a nose ring.
<laughs> Ramon! What gives here? Dig it. Your mom's wrangled backstage passes. You can't go to the concert with our moms. Why not? They're way too old for you. And married? Hello? Age, marriage, that's all just some crazy bourgeois trip, man. I'll give him a trip to the intensive care ward. Veronica, get a grip. I'm trying to, but you keep holding me back. Cool moms, a teenage daughter's wish come true, or worse, nightmare. That's three votes for Nightmare. This is totally embarrassing. Everybody in town will see them. Our lives are like over. Hello, it's the end of the universe. Wake up, Sleeping Beauties. You missed one wild show, man. Huh? Ramon? Is it over? We're in stink totally awesome. Ah, they're okay, I guess, but your moms were crazy. Uh, don't, like, remind us. They won the most rabid fan competition. They've been invited to go along on the whole Raise a Big Stink national tour. Party! Rise and shine, young lady. You're not getting anywhere in life by sleeping all day. If you don't like it, you can make your own lunch. I read the lyric sheet. This CD is now officially a drink coaster. Mom! Mom! Yes? The comments won't be back this way for another 4,000 years. I guess we should have wished for those winning lottery numbers when we had the chance. Huh? Oh, yeah, right. I mean, world peace. Coming up on CPN, the Couch Potato Network, the International Paint Drying Championship. <laughs> Beverly! There you are! What'd you say we had down in the mall? I'd like to check out the new skateboard. Yo! Until we invented television, this was the most popular show going. It also was the very first Connect the Dots game. It had all the big name stars. Did you ever wonder who was the first one to make a wish upon a star? And what did they wish for? Mm. It's cool when you realize we can go outside on a dark night, look up, and see pretty much the same view as our ancient ancestors. Of course, nowadays, when you wish upon a star, you might be wishing on a satellite or a piece of space junk. the weirdest thing about high school? That's right, the teachers. Imagine spending your entire life in school on purpose. But at least they don't have to worry about getting good marks. They could be good, bad, or evil incarnate. But who would know? Their classes are conducted behind closed doors. But there is one exception. Imagine a teacher who is forced to ply a strange craft in broad daylight, 
Imagine inviting parents to watch and judge your every move. Imagine being Coach Concap. All right, now, let's listen up. If you get out there and play hard and play as a team, I know we're gonna... We just might... There's a chance we... <sighs> well, let's face it. We're gonna lose, but at least we can lose with dignity. Try to have fun, okay? Actually, it's the team that stinks. But Coach Concat okay. would be the first to say a good coach never blames his players. Of course, that doesn't stop the parents from blaming the coach. I guess being a nice guy can only get you so far when you're a coach. And Coach K has been even nicer than usual ever since the incident. The incident? Well, it all started on a day just like today. Coach? Oh, oh, coach. Oh, oh, oh. Milo, are you all right? Oh, yeah. D don't worry about me. Just feeling a little weak since I donated blood this morning. Uh, good for you, Milo. Yeah, four pints. Four pints? You should only give one pint at a time. Yeah, but my blood is pH negative, see? It's so rare. I like to donate as much as I can. You know, without actually killing myself or anything. Milo, if there were more kids like you out there, the world would be a better place. I know, Coach. I know. Looks like another humiliating defeat for the home team. If we had some decent players, maybe we'd win once every one or two hundred years. Maybe we need a decent coach. I think the team karma is a little off, that's all. <laughs> a goal! We're gonna get a goal! Go! Come on! <laughs> Maybe their karma is a lot off. <laughs> Tough luck, guys. Hey, you did your best, and that's what counts. You stink, Cockout! We want a new coach! 18 years without a single win, but he still keeps on smiling. How does he do it? Who knows? I'm bummed out just from being a spectator. From now on, I'm off soccer. Cold turkey. <laughs> Um, tough loss today. Yes, tough loss. <laughs> Ever wonder what makes Coach tick? Nope. But I do wonder what his office looks like. Hmm. Not exactly the Ritz, but it has a real guy feel, you know? Whoa, this is unbelievable. No kidding. He has a coaching certificate. Not that. Check out his first name. His first name is actually Coach? What the? Who named their kid Coach? Another coach? Let's get out of here. Suddenly I'm getting the heebie-jeebies. Hey, Coach dropped his lucky whistle. Ah! Don't get it on me! That kind of luck I don't need. But just think, what if the coach has even worse luck without it? <laughs> I, I found this at school and thought you might be looking for it. Thanks, Moville. Good work. Whoa! Talk about trophies! Yes, but not mine exactly. Some were won by my grandfather. And the rest belong to him, the great Bronco Conkout. 23 times voted coach of the year. I was just reviewing his very last game tape. <laughs> Dad always said he wanted to go that way. A 
coach's dream death. Excuse me, I have trophies to dust. It's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. But that only works if you're a player. What if you're the coach? And losing can only be a few hundred times worse if coach is your first name. You stink, Gungus! <laughs> Poor coach, there's nothing worse than being on the losing end of a family dynasty. Funny thing is, it wasn't all the losing that finally pushed him over the edge. Wonder of wonders, Lone Pine was battling their way towards a hard-fought nothing-nothing draw. Thanks to a mix-up in the schedule, only one opposition player showed up, and he was playing injured. You could say getting that win was a real bolt out of the blue. Today must be my lucky day! Time to be proud of you. I guess this will have to do. Dad, a one. At last, I've tasted victory. Nothing tastes so sweet. Ah, one game. That's about as sweet as a warm bucket of spit. They don't hand out trophies for one lousy stinking win. Until you win a trophy, you're not a real cocker. A real conch out is a real winner. Losing is for losers. Come on, put your backs into it. Two-year-olds can do 25 push-ups. Gee, I'd love to do push-ups, sir, but I donated blood today and- In I... that case, you can drop and give me 50. But I have a rare blood type. Oh, well, since you're so special, get out and give me a 100. Now! Winners sweat, winners ache, winners fight until their arms fall off. I'll turn you into winners if it kills you! <laughs> that wasn't soccer, that was a slaughter! And it's only halftime. Imagine how Coach Conkow feels. You lazy bums! But, Coach, we're sore from the morning practice. No pain, no gain. That's what I always say. I thought you always say winning isn't everything. Uh, get out and take your loser attitude with you. You're poisoning the entire team. The rest of you crybabies, stop whining and start winning. Win, win, win. Uh, you tell them, Coach. <laughs> Time for the greatest comeback in history. Come on, hustle! You've got to give it 150%. 150%? I think he's lost his mind. Maybe he's just lousy at math. I think he just can't accept losing. See, he cannot accept losing. <laughs> Quitters never win. Winners never quit! Double practice tomorrow, 6 a.m. sharp, no excuses. Aww. 
Next time, cheer louder! <clears throat> what? Permit me to introduce myself. I am Carlos Aparicion. I am a, how do you say, soccer player. You look a little old for high school, but if you've got fake ID, you're on the team. We could use a ringer or two. <laughs> you misunderstand. I am captain of El Muerto de Madrid. You have your own plane? We are professionals. Hmm. El Muerto de Madrid. What league do you play in? It's no importante. Hmm. We have come because we need a new coach. A coach who, like us, values winning above all else. <laughs> of course, you will have to say goodbye to all this. You stink, cock out! Hmm. Welcome to El Muerto de Madrid. Just like that, Coach Conkout turned his back on 18 years at Lone Pine High. Yeah, I know. Who can blame him? I mean, what's he got to lose? Actually, you'd be surprised. Maybe it's a good thing these El Huerto guys came along when they did. Coach Conkout needed a new team to go with his new attitude. Just what the doctor ordered, right? Of course he'd have to be a man, doctor. I must tell you, senor coach, that for El Muerto de Madrid, winning is not everything. That's loser talk! Drop and calmo, give me... Calmo, calmo. I was not finished. Winning is not everything. It is the only thing. Am I right? Victoriosos, viva! Defitados! <laughs> Your days of losing are over, my friend. El Muerto de Madrid has not lost a single game in 65 years. For us to lose is worse than to die. Losing is worse than death? <laughs> Go get him, coach! <laughs> Hey, whoa, whoa, you can't do that. <laughs> Why not? It's against the rules. Que? Senor Coach, winning is everything, is it not? Yes, but... Victoriosos, viva! Defitados! I forgot to give this to the referee. Uh, can you do this, uh, por favor? Is um, our team lineup? <laughs> I have our lineup. <gasps> What's eating you? I, 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 I just bribed a referee. So? That's not right. Not right? Not right? I'll tell you what's not right. Losing is not right. Now get out there and make me proud. Nothing like winning on the road. Pick the showers, loser! <laughs> Senor Coach, you do not celebrate? Uh, <laughs> there is no need for words. I know what troubles you. 
A victory does not taste so sweet without... Ha-ha! Go get him, son. Well, this was the moment that Coach Conkow had been waiting for his entire life. He finally had a trophy of his very own. He should have been happy. <laughs> You did your best, and that's what counts. Remember, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you cry, baby. Stop whining and start winning! Win! 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 I'm sorry, I, I can't be your coach. I do not understand. You wish to be a winner, no? Yes, I, I mean, no, not like this. Not if it means I have to. Cheat. <laughs> Cheating is no important. What is important is to win. Always. Forever. But there are some things that are even more important. To me, at least. Maybe it will be best if I just go home. <laughs> I am afraid that is impossible, Senor Coach. Perhaps you did not read the... How do you say? Fine print. I, Coach Cockout, agree to Coach El Muerto de Madrid throughout all eternity. All eternity? How can that be? But this program is from 1936. You guys should all be. <laughs> What's eating you? No! Get away from me! No! Yeah! Now don't tell me you're quitting. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. A lousy B plus? What a loser! You kick like a baby. A baby loser! 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 You stink, Dad! I'll tell you what stinks! Losing stinks! Now get your losing butt back up there! You're gonna be a winner if it kills you! <gasps> Where am I? I'm back. <laughs> it was all a dream. Just a crazy dream. This is my lucky day. <laughs> if we try hard and do our best, maybe we'll win. Probably we'll lose. But if you are going to lose, lose one for me. Since the incident, another 18-year losing streak isn't going to face the coach one bit. It's like a huge burden has been lifted from his shoulders. I guess getting hit by lightning can really clear your head, if it doesn't kill you first. Winning is what it's all about. Winners do whatever it takes. Real winners never say die! <laughs> Triumph, defeat, ultimate victory, total annihilation. Sounds like I'm doing my history homework on the War of 1812, doesn't it? Actually, I'm just scrolling through the sports headlines. Reporters and TV announcers love to describe matches like they're a real battle to the finish. Maybe it's because a lot of sports did evolve as a way of training for battle. Or sometimes as a less deadly alternative for war. At first, these games were pretty rough, but gradually, rules were established, and sporting events became more and more civilized. You loser! You stink!
In the stark reality of high school life, you're either predator or prey, host or parasite. Hey, guys. <gasps> and speaking of parasites, that's Norman Stan, waiting for an unsuspecting host to walk within range. Better get a grip on your lunch money. Hey, you, BB. <laughs> easy, easy. Gee, Norman, that was close. These hands are lethal weapons registered with local law enforcement agencies. I don't even want to tell you about my feet. Great. Can I borrow a quarter? Hey, what about the two bucks you borrowed last week? Oh, yeah. Good idea. Make it a dollar and I'll owe you three. Oh, just hurry up. I, I need my caffeine fix. While we're at it, why don't we just round it up to a fiver? Hey! Pay you back first thing tomorrow. Promise. I get my allowance tonight. Didn't you want a cola? Thanks, buddies. I owe you one. You owe me five. Hey, Stag, hold up, bro. Hitch, what's up? I need to cash in your IOU. I'm hurting for lunch money today. Gee, Hitch, I love to pay back the four bucks I owe you, but... That's five bucks. Like I said, five. But I'm broke too, dude. I'll get you first thing tomorrow. Promise. Norman has a real gift for what bankers call cash flow management. Somehow, he manages to make it flow out of your pocket and into his. Hey, they're finally cutting the lock off the new kid's locker. He wasn't around long. We never really got to know much about him. Other than the fact that he was a real prankster. <laughs> In some ways, I blame myself for what happened. Maybe I should have warned him when he was pushing his luck. <laughs> Mostly, I blame the new kid. He was really annoying. Whoa. <laughs> One day, suddenly, he just disappeared. Legend has it, he was locked forever inside a sweat sock stinking tomb. I call dibs. You have any idea what mummies are going for on the internet? Ooh, what a bust. Issue number one? This is a collector's item. Hey! I called dibs, remember? Huh? Jump. But this might be worth a buck or two. You know nothing about comics. An original first issue of the Things That Go Squish in the Night series would bring at least ten bucks on the open market. Sold. Ten minus the five I owe from this morning means... We're even. But I didn't say I wanted to buy it. I was just... Oh, never mind. Can't pay the washroom tax today. Stang just weaseled me out of my last five bucks. This should be interesting. Gizzard doesn't like to share his prey. It's the law of the jungle. the jungle is nothing compared to the law of gravity. There's nothing like an incident like this to bring everyone in school together. I mean, it isn't often you get a chance to corner a slippery weasel like Norman. Sorry, guys. I'm 
Oh, broke. In several places. A 53-point landing. Sweet. Hey. Mine. He's alive! No! Somebody lend me some tape! Get a grip, Stang. They're just some cheapo novelty gag. Obviously part of a wide-ranging conspiracy to con unsuspecting comic book devotees out of their hard-earned allowance. Ten bucks. Give you five. You charged me ten for it fifteen minutes ago. Exactly. You don't expect me to pay full price for a used comic. But I haven't even read it yet. Okay, okay. Seven fifty. Pay you tomorrow. Hey! Welcome to Ace Novelty's automated telephone ordering service. Please have your credit card ready. Dad! Or press the pound sign to use our buy now, pay later plan. Never mind! Now you're speaking my language. Enter the three digit product code followed by the pound key. Thank you for dealing with the Ace Novelty Company. To hear the hideous blood curdling laugh that signals the end of your transaction, press one. <laughs> That's what I call express service. <gasps> yeah. Exactly what Norman wants us to believe. Hey, Rico! Nice moves! What do you think? Lucky guess? Norman is loaded! He's rich, I tell ya! Rich! <gasps> Tommy Hitchcock is cashing in! Hey guys, what's up? Payback time, that's what's up. I'd love to. Unfortunately, I'm broke. Tomorrow, okay? I'm getting advanced on my la- Ha! You're rich, I tell ya! Rich! Norman cleaned up on the Jitter Cola contest. He scored every winning bottle cap in town. Sounds like somebody's been hallucinating. BB, have you been eating moldy bread again? Hey, he was using these x-ray glasses. They really will- <laughs> First stop, girls' locker room. Ooh! Those guys are such kidders. <laughs> oh, told you they were bogus. But I, but I saw him. <laughs> well, if there is something to what BB said. You'd think this would be the perfect opportunity to pay everybody back. But then, you want to be thinking like Norman. Hide your wealth from prying eyes in the greedy finger's magic bank. 
or press the pound sign to use our buy now, pay later plan. Works like magic. <laughs> Mercenary fighting men command your very own army. Welcome to Ace Novelty's automated telephone ordering service. Please have your credit card ready. Welcome to Fort Stang. Secure the perimeter. Nobody can touch me now. I'm invincible! <laughs> Norman, you said you'd pay me tomorrow. Okay. Oh. So pay up. Hitch, I said I'd pay you tomorrow. This is today. I, uh... But... Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. That was yesterday. So today is actually yesterday's tomorrow. Ergo... Tomorrow is today. Gotcha. You're right, Hitch. Guess I can't fool you. Problem is, I'm broke. He's rich. Rich, I tell ya. I say we check his room. Morning, Mr. Stang. We've got mail for Norman. We'll just leave it in his room. Ouch! Man, these things are pointy. Uh, well, if he did have any dough, it looks like he spent it all on junk. But he had wheelbarrows full. Sorry, guys. I'm tapped out. Broke. No dough. Not one thin dime. Now quit bugging me, all right? What a bunch of greedy, money-grubbing... Uh, mm. Don't tell me you're after me, too. No, just hanging out. You seem a little stressed. Who wouldn't be? Everybody's after my money. Uh, not that I even have any, because I'm broke. Mm-hmm. Too bad. It would make your life a lot easier if you took care of those IOUs you've rung up. Oh. Yeah, that's just what I should do. Take care of them. Captain, Colonel Stang here. At ease. Now listen up. Tonight we launch Operation Get Off My Back.
Ready? Aim! Wait! Almost forgot these! Fire! Okay, okay, I'll get it. <gasps> what gives? I didn't order any more stuff. Sooner or later, I guess we're all gonna get our final notice. But in Norman's case, it'll be from the good folks at the Ace Novelty Company. Final notice? They got that right. Norman! <gasps> Time to pay up. <gasps> yeah? Well, your ad said, buy now, pay later. So I'm gonna pay you later. I would prefer huh? sooner, as in now. <gasps> As in, <gasps> or else. Wh why? What's it to you? A lot. <laughs> you see, I'm Ace. <gasps> no! <laughs> Pay up, Norman. I'd love to, but, but I'm broke. See? What am I doing? I've got my own army. Blast him! They're mercenaries, Norman. That means they work for whoever pays them. All right, all right. No problem, fellas. I'm rich. It's all right here. Commence operation final notice. Right to head out. Wait, I'll get in advance of my allowance. But your father already advanced your allowance until your 50th birthday. Oh. He won't fall for that again, will he? How about an IOU then? Pay up, Norman. <laughs> no! Move it out. <gasps> Just give me one more day. <laughs> Time's up, Norman. Nobody's falling for that anymore. No, no, uh, I'll pay. Oh, with an IOU? <laughs> no! Well, I hear is folks caught them maxing out their credit cards and sent them away to reform school. Exactly what he wants us to believe. I'm sure that as we speak, Norman is holed up on a sandy beach in some tropical tax haven, enjoying his millions. Did greed finally catch up with Norman Stain? Who knows? All we know for sure is, one day, he just disappeared. They say money can't buy happiness. And they've been saying it for a long time. But let's face it, they'll never be as short as the people who want to find that out the hard way. Just like King Midas. There was only one thing Midas loved more than his darling daughter. Thanks to a good deed he'd done, Midas was granted a wish by the god Dionysus. So Midas wished that whatever he touched would turn to gold. But it wasn't such a bright idea. I mean, sure, he was incredibly rich, but he was getting awfully hungry and thirsty. Not to mention lonely. <laughs> Maybe money can't buy happiness, but it sure can buy you all the doom you want.
We sure have come a long way since we crawled out of the primordial ooze. You'd think that at this stage in human evolution, we'd all know better than to judge others by outward appearances. Unfortunately, some of us are lagging way behind. Which is why I'm a bit worried about the new family moving in over there. So much hinges on first impressions. And who knows what they're gonna think when they get a load of their new neighbor, Billy Boone. Hmm. Yeah! <gasps> Go sneaking up on a guy like that. I almost unloaded on you with my full kung fu arsenal. Yeah! Thanks for pulling back. So, have you met your new neighbors? Neighbors? <laughs> exactly what they want me to believe. Seems your old neighbors left town in kind of a hurry. Straight back to whatever planet that alien spawn calls home. I was just about to expose their plan for world domination when they blasted off. I thought the Lundorfs were from Saskatchewan. Ah, uh, flimsy cover story. They knew I knew too much. They were planting these high-tech listening devices all over my yard. That's a hockey puck. Wise up, Mo. Things are never what they seem. These are identical to devices deployed by the invading forces in Attack of the Uranian Clones, issue number 23. To you, it's a comic. To Bibi, reference material. If I could only get a visual, I'd have a better idea of just who or what I'm dealing with this time. Why don't we just go introduce ourselves? Oh, risking everything on a single toss of the dice, eh? Catch them off guard. Use the element of surprise. Bold and devious. I like it. We'll call it Operation Howdy Neighbor. And have no fear. Should your mission end badly, I'll destroy all records of our conversation. It's a community service. Somebody's got to warn them about BB. Nobody home! You're supposed to use the walkie-talkies! Mother Goose to Little Boy Blue, come in. Little Boy Blue... Ah! They're jamming our communication channel! They probably have their stuff shipped ahead. Hmm, obviously a desperate ploy to slip through my surveillance net. Home plate to first base. Home plate to first base. <laughs> it's just mom. Return to dugout. Operation dig in commences in five minutes. Roger that home plate. ETA 60 seconds. First base over and out. Supper time. You've broken the code. Oh, you're good, Mo. Maybe too good. Someone or something is in there. I can feel it. I got that creepy feeling I'm being watched. Problem is, BB was born with that feeling. Anyway, he's got a creepy feeling he's being watched. Funny, I got that same feeling right now. <laughs> Activity in Sector A. Those fiends, they're training squirrels to do their dirty work. Ah! Mother Goose to Little Boy Blue. Mother Goose to Little Boy Blue. We have a code red. Repeat, code red. Hello, um, Mother Goose? You're coming in loud and clear. Over. Come in, Mother Goose. Over. Over? I think not, you... you... whatever you are. This is Billy Boone you're messing with. We're just getting started! Billy?
Billy? Mom. I... Seen them. The new neighbors are here? I hope they have children your age. Not any human ones. Hello? Are you there? Looks like the new neighbors still haven't arrived. Exactly what they want you to believe. They're in there. Targets left their base at 20 hundred hours and did not return until 0500. Who knows what they're up to on their nocturnal rambles. Getting used to a new time zone can take a while. Mm, could be jet lag. Oh, you are so naive. There's got to be a much more evil and sinister explanation. Remember what happened to the unsuspecting town folk in Werewolves from Mars, Volume 2? You can never be too careful. Ow. Meg! Well, when did m m Mrs. Ricketts plant r r roses? <coughs> yeah! I'm under attack! <laughs> no, it can't be easy being BB. Of course, it must be way tougher being his neighbor. Tasty complexion, he dresses creepy, and to top it off, he has glowing purple eyes. It all adds up. There's evil in that house. Evil! Get a grip. You, of all people, should know better than to judge others by outward appearances. What's that supposed to mean? This new guy sounds interesting. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Are you insane? He's creepy, he's evil, he's... he's... Right behind you? <laughs> Class, this is Victor Corpus. <gasps> He's just moved here from Pennsylvania. Ha! Transylvania is more like it. This is a code purple. Repeat, code purple. Do not let this creature near you. Its merest touch could be toxic. Uh, I can't take it. What is it? Are there evil mind-probing thought rays emanating from that creep? <laughs> no. Stupid rays emanating from you are giving me a headache. You can sit here next to Billy, Victor. For some reason, this seat is perpetually unoccupied. Poor guy, he's so shy. Shy? Or afraid? Afraid that I'm onto him and his plan to smother us all in his cloak of evil? Let's go break the ice. Coming? I think not. At least one of us should remain in full control of their faculties. Hi, I'm Mimi. This is Hitch and Mo. Uh, like lambs to the slaughter. What madness. All oh, right, the Supernaturalist Field Guide. You know it? Never leave home without it. An identification guide to supernatural flora and fauna of the world? You never know when you might be in a tight spot and need to tell the difference between a werewolf and a shapeshifter taking the wolf form. A shapeshifter has less fur and a smaller tail. A silver bullet will stop a werewolf, but won't even slow down a shapeshifter. <laughs> right. You need a special potion to take out a shapeshifter. Oh, brother. Once Mo starts talking shop, we'll never stop him. Ugh, do something! Wanna see me sneeze a french fry out my nose? Um, sure. But first I should return this. Hmm. It'll serve him right if they end up as his first victims. I found this on the... Oh no, hold still. Your mouth closed. Oh, he's got a sardine stuck to the roof of his mouth. <laughs> you 
Oh, sorry. Your wit witnesses. Nice Heimlich. Well, BB, what do you say? That creep tried to kill me! <sighs> Don't let him get you down, Victor. There's only one creep around here, and you just saved his life. Sometimes a vampire transforms into a wolf. Yeah, says here they can even take the form of mist. And they're incredibly powerful. You don't want to mess with one unless you really know what you're doing. And you don't mess with Billy Boone either, my friend. So, uh, you want to go shoot some hoops? I'd like to, but I promised my folks I'd be home early. Well, well, it seems your little friend has an aversion to sunlight. Ew! Ugh! Better than an aversion to hygiene. Oh, what's with the eau de sewer cologne? All the better to throw him off my trail. Vampires have a sense of smell that would be the envy of any bloodhound. It's all right here in Undead from the Center of the Earth. Bibi, I know what you're thinking. Oh, you're scaring me, Mo. But you're wrong. You all saw him attack me. He knows I know too much. Oh, that sardine had you down for the count, dude. Victor saved your life. Exactly what he wants you to believe. That creep's telepathic powers are clouding your minds. Shake it off before it's too late. How about we give you a shake? They have no idea of the monster who walks in their midst. Once again, the fate of Ouija Falls rests upon my able shoulders. I know what you're thinking, but remember, appearances can be deceiving. Hmm. Looks like the Corpus family likes to dine late. I'll catch this little creep red-handed. Or should I say, red-fanged. And so, the hunter becomes the hunted. Bring it on! I'm ready for ya, ya vampire! <laughs> so, don't want to share the kill, huh, bat boy? Bat boy? <laughs> I guess it is kind of weird having a bat for a pet, isn't it? Vlad! <whistles> he got out of his cage and I was following him, but I found you instead. BB? I was this close to joining the legions of the walking undead. Sounds like you were about to become the Chewy Center for Hairball. That's twice Victor saved your life, BB. Shouldn't that tell you something? I see what you mean. Obviously, he's even more evil than I thought. What? That's not what I... He's toying with me like a cat with a mouse. Billy? Mom... How many times I gotta tell you? Knock. I was speaking to Mrs. Corpus this afternoon. <gasps> Did she sink her fangs in you? Do you know they have a son your age? 
The poor boy has a rare sun allergy. He has to be very careful when he's out in the daylight. <laughs> That's the lamest cover story I've ever heard. Mrs. Corpus has invited you over for dinner tonight so you two boys can get to know each other. Ha, ha, ha. Thanks for the offer, but I like my blood. Think I'll keep it. They're expecting you at 1800. Yeah? Well, I'll be ready for them. Remember to say please and thank you, and eat your vegetables. Yeah, right. And if I never see you again, remember, it was you who sent me to a grisly death. <sighs> Hi, Bibi. Come on in. Welcome. It is a pleasure to... Over my dead body! He really likes playing hide-and-seek. Hey, Bibi. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Ugh. Come out wherever you are. Billy? <laughs> There's no way these creeps are gonna experiment on me. We were just playing, and BB slipped on a comic book. Victor, I've told you not to leave comics on the floor a million of one times. Vampires night out? Ghost ghouls and scary spirits? Werewolf honeymoon? You've got every issue! <gasps> So this explains why you're such an authority on the macabre. I collect sci-fi comics, too. Oh. Plutonian plunderers lost in the black hole. Oh. Radeon Man issue one? I've only seen this one sealed up in a display case. Wicked! Night vision goggles. I got them so I can play at night. Because of my sun allergy, I have to avoid daylight. <laughs> daylight is overrated. But what about the coffins? Oh, my father needs them. For his job. He's an undertaker. That's awesome! Another small slice of cake, BB? No thanks, Mrs. C. I couldn't eat another bite. I'm stuffed. Wanna check out some more comics? Last one upstairs is a zombie! <laughs> it's nice to see Bibi finally set aside his suspicions and strike up a friendship with Victor. Of course, we knew he wasn't a vampire the day we saw Victor's reflection in the cafeteria silverware. Everybody knows vampires don't have reflections, right? Mom, Dad, please, not this one. He's my new friend. Shall we order out? I have a craving for pizza. Oh, but dear, we had Pizza Man last night. <laughs> Desmodus Rotundus, better known as the Vampire Bat. Ounce for ounce, this little guy is probably one of the most feared creatures on Earth. But all you slumbering maidens out there can relax. They mainly feed on livestock. Even the bats that aren't bloodsuckers are pretty cool. Some feed on insects, others eat fruit or nectar. 
Some have extra long claws they use for fishing. Charles Darwin called it evolutionary adaptation. Over many generations, bats have developed all kinds of feeding strategies, including sucking fresh, warm blood from a living host. The question is, which came first? The bat or the vampire? Whoa, whoa, oh! When you get right down to it, life is all about survival. For some of us, survival is an instinct. Oh, come on, what's the holdup? It's fine. For others, it's pure dumb luck. Oh, man, I got a soaker. And maybe there are other, more unexplainable forces at work. Odd. This place smells like the school cafeteria. Shh. We don't want to attract any sewer gators. Oh, that's just some stupid old urban myth. Right? Who knows? Anyway, tonight we're after something way more interesting. Great. What? A warm-blooded predator with razor-sharp fangs and deadly claws, known for its ability to take down prey three times its size. I hear the warm, damp conditions, coupled with abundant nutrients and chemical waste, turns them into gigantic sewer mutants. Don't let it get away! Hey, check this out! I like what they've done with the place. Careful, they can move with blinding speed. This is the fearsome giant sewer ferret? Oh, another urban legend bites the dust. directly downstream from the Codgers Rest Seniors Villa. So? So, run! Why? Seniors are highly susceptible to the bladder control domino effect. my life. <coughs> Aloha, Hitch. You know me? <laughs> of course. I'm Mele Kalikimaka. Maimala Maka Wiki? You can call me Sharon. I am your guardian angel. <laughs> guardian angel? <laughs> your last guardian angel had a nervous breakdown, so I have been assigned to your case. No. Seriously? Is the ambulance workers' union holding the costume ball tonight, or what? Hitch! You're okay. Huh. Never better, thanks to Sharon. We'd better get you into some dry clothes. Dude, where's your manners? You should at least say hello. To who? To my guardian angel. Hey, where'd she go? 
She was right over here! Ah! <sighs> My friends all say I'm attracted to the reckless type. Hitch, are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? I've got a guardian angel! <laughs> and she's a real babe, too. Remember, we're talking Hitch here. People see all sorts of strange things when they have near-death experiences. Yeah, but that's like white lights and spirits and stuff. This is pretty specific. He says her name is Sharon. Don't be such a worrywart. Yeah! <laughs> Maybe we'd better keep an eye on him. <laughs> he was reckless enough before he thought he had a guardian angel. <laughs> Kill. Yeah, isn't she great? I think I'm gonna like having a guardian angel on my back. She even saved my board! Tape of that one? What's wrong? Did you pull a muscle or something? I'm beginning to think you don't appreciate me. Of course I do! This guardian angel thing is a blast! Look! Now to scratch on me! Boys, do you ever think of anything but yourselves? Oh. <laughs> I know what's bugging ya. Hey, listen. Don't feel bad about losing my hang glider. I'm sure you'll do better next time. Maybe there won't be a next time. Wait! You're not mad, are you? What did I say? Oh, come on back. Sharon? Oh, Sharon. Ouch! Ow, 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 ow. Okay, this is a very loaded question, but are you okay? Yeah. Uh, hey, Mimi, you're a girl, right? Thanks for noticing. I'm having a little, um, uh, girl trouble. And since you are, uh, one, maybe you can give me some advice. Ugh, brother, so that's what's behind the daredevil routine. You're trying to impress a girl? She's mad at me for some reason. Makes perfect sense so far. So I need to figure out a way to make up. Try flowers. <laughs> You're hopeless. Look, Hitch, nothing says I'm sorry for being a total doofus better than a nice bouquet of flowers. Flowers. Got it. I don't believe it. Hitch has a girlfriend. That is unbelievable. But if... if it isn't a girlfriend, that would mean... he does have a guardian angel. Heads up! Hitch, where are you going? I'm gonna high dive off the falls! I was just talking to Hitch. I hope you said goodbye. Come on! Oh, you're such a worrywart! 
All I'm saying is of the two scenarios, which is the most highly unlikely? A, Hitch has a girlfriend, or B, Hitch has a guardian angel. How about C? He's totally delusional. <gasps> Hitch! No! You're right. This is crazy. A backflip has way more style points. <gasps> yeah! Where'd he go? He should have made it to the bottom already. Whoa! I knew that'd get you back. I can see her. This is amazing. You are so... Sorry? Oh, Hitch. They're beautiful. How did you know hibiscus are my favorite? Must have been dumb luck. Aloha, my little macadamia nut. The Hitster is back in the house. Thanks, Mimi. That flower trick was sweet. Ugh, what have I done? Sharon thinks he's caring and sensitive. There should be a warning label on these things. <laughs> hey! What do you think you're doing? A 360 inverted atom bomb. I don't think so. You could skin a knee, and that can lead to a nasty infection. And we can't have that now, can we, Poo Poo Nookie Nookums? Uh, Poo Poo Nookie... who? Where have you been all morning? Sharon took away my skateboard and my bike, my bus pass. She only let me walk to school when I agreed to wear these. Stylin'. She even conjured up a personal bodyguard to help me cross the street. And then, when she found out today's special was Afterburner Chili Burgers, she made me brown bag it. Huh? Strained beef? Ugh. Solid food is too dangerous for my little papaya muffin. <laughs> Why is she torturing me? Oh, come on, it's obvious. You mean, she's evil? She has a crush on you, you dope. She's crushing me, all right. You gotta help me, Mimi. <sighs> Just tell her the truth. Girls appreciate guys who are honest. Girls, guys, truth? Sounds like a volatile mixture. <laughs> Good luck. Well, here goes. Hitch? You know you're lactose intolerant. This nasty milk would give my little kahuna a big tummy ache. Um, yeah. Speaking of pain, there's something I have to, uh... Olaf, what are you doing here? I told you I never want to see you again. Nobody is dumping Olaf. <laughs> Lots of people believe we all have a guardian angel, and that angel is a reflection of our personality, which might explain why they're not all hula girls. It's over between us, Olaf. I have found someone who's caring and sensitive. Ha! He is nothing. I could snap him like a little twig. Hey, I've been working out. Oh, look! Olaf is so frightened! He's shaking in his Viking boots! Boys. Olaf, angry! 
you. I am going to rip out your stomach and wear it like a hat. Oh, boy. Listen, Olaf, this is crazy. My stomach is way too small to make a decent hat. I could eat your liver on a cracker. You actually like liver? No, but Olaf will do anything to get his share back. Wait! I have a less painful idea. And you won't even have to eat liver. I mean, it's no wonder you're out of shape if that's the kind of junk you eat. Here, try one of these. Olaf loves his Sharon more than crushing skulls of enemies, but somehow she is under the evil curse of this puny little maggot. I call it the hitch factor. What do we do, Mimi? It's a tricky one, all right. It's simple. Obviously, Sharon is in love with Olaf, not the maggot formerly known as Hitch. Huh? huh? She's just using Hitch to make a point to Olaf about certain qualities she's looking for in a guy. <laughs> Ugh, I don't mean his real qualities. I'm talking about the fake ones. Oh, the caring, sensitive, icky stuff. But Olaf is Viking. Other Vikings will laugh and call him uh, Sissy. They will take away Olaf's hammer. Your decision, Romeo. You want to get Sharon back or not? Ah. Yeah. Whoa! Sorry. To start, now somebody get me a comb. Oh, on second thought, better make that a rake. Amazing. Thanks. Helps be handy with the power tools. What if Sharon is not showing up? No probs, Olaf. I've come up with a perfect blend of stupidity and danger. Wouldn't it be even more dangerous without the bungee cord? Duh. That's why I haven't tied it to anything. Hitch! Oof! Oh, hey, Sharon. Huh, fancy meeting you here. <laughs> You really shouldn't be up this high. You'll get a nosebleed. <coughs> Aloha, Sharon. Olaf, is that you? But you're so, so clean. It is too. Olaf smells springtime fresh. I have traded in flaming hammer for toothbrush. <laughs> 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 Don't play games with me. You're seeing someone else, aren't you? No. Uh, Vikings honor. Well, you never get all cleaned up for me. Uh. Uh, oh, yes. And, uh, 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 what was it? Uh, Olaf is uh, sorry. You'll forgive him, my big volcano. <sighs> Better late than never, I guess. <sighs> Happy anniversary! Huh? We've been going steady for a year and three days. Now Olaf and Sharon take sunset cruise in longboat. And Olaf will not even stop for raiding villages. That's amore. Oh, Olaf, you're so romantic. Have fun, you lovebirds, and don't do anything I would do! Sharon! Oh! Sorry, she's putting in for transfer. She's Olaf's little angel now. Well, what do you know? Looks like he had a little dumb luck left in the tank after all. Of course, the main problem with relying on dumb luck is there's no gas gauge, so you never know if you're running on empty. Huh, what a rush. Ah, uh, that was nothing. Name's Maurice. I'll be your new guardian angel. I hear you're quite the little daredevil, huh? Whoa! Uh -oh. Well, let's get up. This is hot little angel I want to impress. 
<laughs> there have been a lot of hot dance crazes over the years. But the hula has to be the hottest ever, literally. According to ancient legend, the fire goddess Pele had quite a temper, and when she blew her top, she did it big time. Talk about burning up the dance floor. The only one who could cool Pele down was her sister, Hayaka, who used her hula moves to lull Pele into a trance-like sleep. The flowers and trees came back to life too. It's no wonder Hayaka kicked off a whole hula craze. Ouija Falls, founded more than 300 years ago by a brave band of hardy pioneers who hacked their way through raw wilderness. It was a long and arduous journey, fraught with unimaginable pain, suffering, and starvation. But that was a walk in the park compared to the average high school field trip. I don't even know what was going on. I was just coming out of the room, and all of a sudden, whack, right in the face, and then, oh, I started preparing my eyes. Earplugs. Never go on a field trip without them. I can't believe this was your idea. A field trip to the fish hatchery? Yeah, bright idea, Edison. The fish hatchery is next to the nuclear power plant. I hear the fish are radioactive and have three heads. Sweet! Arr, we ain't sailed but three blocks and tis mutiny already! Take the hell, missus. Swabs, or I'll kill all the lotties. Somebody doesn't have all their oars in the water. Yeah, Mr. Silver hasn't been the same since he fell into the killer whale tank on our field trip to the marine park. North by northwest, and hold her close to the wind, Cornbuckle. Permission to sing, Mr. Silver? Ah, oh, he loves a good sea shanty. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you to bring earplugs? Head something fierce. Oh, we were wondering if we might use the facilities. Scylla, think the rain will hurt the rhubarb? Had it? I didn't know Mo spoke farmer. We were uh, wondering if it'd be okay to water the horses. Huh? Rest rooms for paying customers only. Welcome to Farmer Dell's petting farm. Petting farm? That's lame. That's for little kids. Bunnies! 
Can't pet the bunnies without the kibble. Dollar a cup. What a rip-off. You are absolutely right. But I really have to go. Um, do you take credit cards? Any port in the store, eh, lads? They're so cute! <sighs> I might convince the school board to reimburse me if I could salvage at least a shred of an educational angle. Perhaps the children could have a tour of the barn. Barn's off limits. Wouldn't want the young uns getting hurt, or mangled, or impaled. Or squashed, or shredded. Fine, I get the idea. Or dismembered, bad for business. It's a wonder he isn't charging us extra to pet the flies. Guys, come on, you gotta see this. <gasps> now we know where old school buses go to die. Forget the buses. What happened to the passengers? Oh, let's get out of here. This, this place is giving me the creeps. Me too. Time to go. No, oh, I'm fine. I already went. Oh, you mean go. Goodbye, little bunny wunnies. Shake a leg, Mr. Silver, before he charges me extra for parking. Be calmed. There be no wind in her sails. Why don't you take your coats off and stay a while? <laughs> so, just how long is a while in farmer talk? Oh, anywhere from an afternoon. Forever. It looks like Farmer Dell's petting farm has fallen on hard times. So, it's no surprise he wants his only customers to stick around for a while. <sighs> Could we use your telephone? Never had any use for such newfangled gadgets. Does anyone have a cell phone? No go! Out of range. No service. Nothing. Zilch. Arr, could you give me a hidden for the nearest port? Gasoline station is that way. That'll be five dollars for the loan of the bucket. He'll probably let us leave once Mrs. K's gold card is maxed out. No sign of sabotage on this one. This one either. <laughs> At least nothing I can smell. Hmm. We're looking for something that can mangle, shred, impale, or dismember. Cool. Some of this stuff looks like it belongs in a torture chamber. Taxidermy. Ah! You okay? Uh, yeah, but I don't like owls as much as I used to. Oh man, I think I landed on a kitten. Huh? Poor thing sounds frightened. It must be trapped in there. Here, kitty, kitty. Whoa! Somebody ought to change the litter box. Huh? You know, for a cat, it's not very light on its feet. Maybe because it's not a cat. Gorilla? With horns? How about horrible, bloodthirsty demon from the very depths of the underworld? 
This is why I hate field trips. <laughs> the farmer spends his days plowing, tilling, nurturing, weeding, and feeding, and then comes the harvest, when at last he can realize the rewards of his noble toil. I bought them at the supermarket. A half what it would cost to grow them myself. Oh, well, wasn't that educational? It's a cow? You mean a horrible, bloodthirsty demon that vaguely resembles a cow? No, just a cow. A cow? How now, brown cow? <laughs> Ooh, I, you know, for a cow, he's oh, awfully affectionate. She's got company. This is disgusting. Actually, pigs get a bad rap. I've read that they're really very clean animals and intelligent, too. Yeah, right. Hey, Piggy, what's two times two? Whoa! Yeah! Mad Pig! Four? Oh, lucky guess. I wasn't talking about the pig. I mean these horrible living conditions. Why would Farmadell keep these poor things locked up down here? Our ears must be playing tricks on us. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on. The kitty books have it all wrong. Cow goes moo, huh? Ha! A cow goes meow! Cats go moo and pigs go cock a doodle doo! I think there's more to it than that. Yeah, the illustrators don't know squat about farm animals either. Huh? No wonder our generation's so spaced out. You can say that again. Maybe Farmer Della isn't quite as old-fashioned as we thought. Nighty night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Bed bugs? <laughs> Sounds big. And hungry. Big and hungry enough to take a bite out of a school bus. <laughs> High school lore is filled with tales of buses that went out, but never returned. Of course, until now, I thought they were just urban myths, made up by teachers to keep the kids in line. Somebody's been renovating. Going down! Huh? Hey! I think they're trying to tell us something. Stand back. I know how to communicate with animals. What is it, fella? You want to play fetch? Huh? Go get it. Go get it. Sit. Stay. Down. Roll. Oh. Whoa. Easy, fella. A regular Dr. Doolittle. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but this is way better. What's this guy up to? Genetics. Yeah, they say farming's in the blood. In this case, it's filling the freezer. Check it out. Every kind of animal DNA on the planet, from aardvark to zebra. DNA, the very building blocks of life. Yeah, we know, Hitch. We took it in science class. But I like saying, the very building blocks of life. Oh, rope. Kitty cow, chick pig, Tasmanian bunny. Maybe he's trying to develop a new breed of super cow. Or pigs that lay bacon and eggs. Maybe there's more to it than that. Lucille? Mind your manners. Shouldn't go touch another people's property. And you shouldn't monkey around with human DNA. Shows you how much you know about genetic engineering. The big multinationals got that market all sewn up. But then, who's Lucille? Oh, that's just my pet name for her. Don't normally name the livestock, but Tyrannosaurus lamb wouldn't fit on the test tube. The Petten Farm is where I reckon there's still money to be made. 
He's trying to engineer the ultimate petting farm animal. Now, what kid wouldn't want a pet a real live dinosaur, hmm? Running around that way will only get her all excited. She's still just a lamb, you know. Amazing. Unbelievable. Sweet. I found her tickle zone. It's the lamb genes that make her so cuddly. Of course, not all my experimenting worked out quite so good. But that's genetic engineering for you. It's the T-Rex genes that make her so bloodthirsty. Now, Daisy, mind what I told you about eating the customers. It's bad for business. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. There, there, Lucille. Easy, girl. Daisy, fresh meat. Come and get me. Go! I've already got her in the 14th gear! Oh, this is bad. Cage, floor it! Hold on, Mo! I guess it's the Tasmanian devil genes that make him so ornery. <gasps> Go! Bunnies! Poor Farmer Dell. What a weird way to go. Well, he should have known monkeying around with dinosaur DNA would lead to trouble. Yeah. Hasn't he seen the movies? Huh? Oh. Uh... Never had much use for them newfangled talking picture shows. Farmer Dell. He's all right. But that Jurassic lamb had him for an appetizer. Luckily, it didn't chew its food. Yeah, but still, how did he... 
Don't ask. Uh, reckon I'll go have me a long hot shower. <laughs> Who's up for a nice fresh glass of milk? Please. Hasn't this field trip been enough of a nightmare already? Yeah, it was smoking. Way anchor, Mr. Silver! Aye aye! Bye bye, bunnies! When somebody has messy habits, we call them a pig, right? Well, aside from insulting an innocent animal, that statement is a lot closer to the truth than you might think. There, but for a few microscopic strands of DNA, goes you or I. Genetically, that's about all that separates humans from pigs, or a lot of other creatures. They say what really sets us apart is our opposable thumb, which allows us to manipulate objects, tools, even DNA. Know what I think is the main thing that sets humans apart from the rest of the animal kingdom? We love to tinker. Of course, that's what makes us so scary, too. <laughs>